right, we have Mr. Dan Pena here, billion dollar man, trillion dollar man. Then I guess it's what, super rich fucking man? And what's after that? <laughs> Not much. What's after the trillion, the quadruple trillion? Quadrillion? Or? Yeah, well, um, I think it is quadrillion, but we're not there yet. But uh, yeah, the, uh, but it's, it's been a tough pull. I had originally set up in 1993 that by uh, five, 10 years, I'd be at the trillion mark. It took me uh, almost 23 years because I grossly underestimated um, the meatheads out there uh, and their lack of self-confidence, lack of self-esteem, etc. cetera. Uh, but we finally got there. And to, uh, just to paraphrase something you said a little earlier, I never gave up uh, the, um, and the kids uh, often give up, but um, I didn't. And so we're at a trillion, we're actually at 2.3 trillion now in the, um, uh, because of NEOM, the biggest uh, city of the future uh, that's uh, co-sponsored by Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan, and um, the uh, it's a it's a big big deal. And you know, I said oh, about a year, year and a half ago, that it would create one million billionaires, not the guys that are already billionaires, but new fresh meat just from the crumbs that are falling off the table of that big project. From so, zero to that, basically, yeah, which yeah. you had done many times yeah, in the past. Correct. And something we had talked about uh, before we got on is that you have a photographic memory. Not, no, not quite f fully photographic. Okay. But I'm, I'm, I remember stuff that's just unreal. Now, can um, you see it? Like, if you look at something. No, now, I can think it though. I, I think, think I, I don't see it. But when I see a face, like there was a girl last night um, we saw at the airport that uh, I knew from someplace. And um, the uh, and I finally thought of it, you know, after she was already gone, uh, from several uh, uh, hours later, she was from Russia, and I used to be in business in Russia, uh, in the uh, after the wall fell in the early '90s, mid '90s, and so um, the uh, but and she looks the spitting image of her mother, not her, because she wasn't even alive then, because she's maybe 25, 28 now, but yeah, I I have I have that kind of memory, yeah. I had read an article. Uh, Brad Pitt had said that he can't, I forget what the name of it, uh, the, the medical name is, that he can't recognize faces. He's, he had, really? He's I didn't had know that. that. Yeah, and, I, and I, I, as a joke, I was thinking maybe it was because too many girls were coming after him, you know? <laughs> but, but he said, really, he recognizes people by voice and so on and so forth. Really? And earlier in his career, he didn't want to say that in case he wouldn't get hired to act or whatever it may be. And you know, one thing I think you would agree with is we all have our issues, but everybody tries to hide them up like they have the perfect life and perfect everything. The first time I saw you, saw you, which got me into, and you were the first podcast I ever watched continuously. I saw you on Brian Rose. This was mm -hmm. before you got to Brian Rose. Mm -hmm. When Brian Rose was in the flannel skateboard. <laughs> I remember it well. And there was a clip and you had talked about how you had gone into the Rolls Royce dealership over and over and over. Correct. And in 2004, I was, yeah, I had many different businesses and I had put a poster on my wall of a Lamborghini, uh, Legar they stopped making them, the Gallardo Spider. And five years later, I had gotten that. So when I had seen you say that, that's what got me into you. And then I started watching how you did your classes and how you talked, and you remind me of my grandfather. And I say this at nausea, but he was a tough love type of guy, where if it was football, if it was 33 degrees out, two degrees out, in a wife beater, catch 100 passes, don't care what your mom says, 100 passes, then you go in. If it's 102 degrees out, three sweatshirts, three sweatpants, 100 passes. You talk back, you don't hold the door for somebody older than you, <laughs> boom, because they know more than you. You don't hold the door for a woman, huh, wait till we get in the Buick, Tommy. And at the time I had hated, you know, this guy is killing me. But then when I went to play football and, and others, they were handing out those, you know, hand warmers and I didn't need them and I understood everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what really attracted me to you throughout and watched you non, 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 nonstop. What did you do to Brian Rose from A to Z? What did you do? Well, I went on a show. Um, he released it Easter of 2014. I went on a show two or three weeks before that, and then he edited it. And I, uh, when he, he walked me to the cab that he had um, ordered for me, and we we're out waiting for the cab. And then I turned to him and I said that um, Brian. Uh, if you allow people to get past this T-shirt and holy jean shit, uh, the, uh, you know, you're an MIT graduate, uh, and, and not 
blowing too much smoke up MIT graduates' asses. They, but I mean, you're obviously a smart kid. Uh, you know, I, I change lives. And that was all I said to him. Then the next time I went on a show, which was, I don't know, some uh, months later, um, he still hadn't made the transition to looking like, you know, uh, a person, uh, but he was on that way. And I still remember but the first time um, uh, he, I came dressed uh, in a suit similar to this, and so he takes pictures, you know. And uh, two things I noticed. Number one, I was about seven, eight inches taller than he was. Now I'm not. Uh, somehow he's grown three inches. I'll leave it to you how he's grown three inches. Fuck. To the best of my knowledge, he has not had an operation to lengthen your legs, which I know you can't have. Tommy, um, knows and, and, and number two, um, the, uh, he went and got a sports coat out of the closet because he used to do his uh, podcast in an apartment that he used to live in but w turned into a studio, and he got a, uh, a sports coat to put on, although he wasn't wearing it during the interview. And uh, the, trying, to, trying to dress up. Uh, but then he came to the seminar about uh, a year and a half later, and he was uh, 25 people like normal. And he was, um, I won't say he was impressed, but he was more impressed what people had done with the knowledge of the QLA system and still came to the seminar uh, with no MIT grad, uh, diploma, with n nothing. And uh, he started to change. Plus, it resonated with his uh, following. He originally said he was uh, concerned about putting me on the show because he says they're either going to love you or hate you. And uh, he was selling different things uh, on the show at that time. Right. And contrary to what he thought, you know, three or four, five hundred thousand people, not overnight, but within the first eight, ten days, said it was a good deal. And so he realized that maybe uh, he didn't need to uh, associate or look like the people that he interviewed. And so, um, and the rest was history, and it's eight hours later. Now he's, got, he's deviated into a couple other things that I, I don't necessarily support, but um, there's uh, about 100 mini-me's out there, about 100, and that are doing everything from magic to, <laughs> uh, to Bitcoin. Uh, and, the, uh, and so, uh, you know, it's like raising kids, you're gonna find out uh, a world-renowned psychiatrist, child psychiatrist named Carlo D'Antonio, an Italian guy, who was good friends with my dad, and Mark D'Antonio, his son, who's a child psychiatrist, uh, who just passed away, uh, to say there's all kinds of data that to have a, an average family, three kids, one's going to be a superstar, unfortunately, one's going to be a bum, and one's going to be average, okay? And um, with one out of three, you're in the Hall of Fame, you're batting 300, right? And so um, you'll see, um, and we were discussing before we got on camera, daughters are special. And the, um, if you're fortunate, that she won't figure it out sooner than later. She'll figure it out later than sooner. But it's all about the people she hangs around with. And you know that you're an average of the five people that you spend most of the time with. But again, you're Italian. I'm one quarter Sicilian. My grandfather's from Palermo, my mother's mm -hmm. father. And uh, I only met him one time. He was a hard old bastard, uh, tough love guy. Uh, and uh, but uh, so uh, but uh, that that uh, that common work in the fields don't need extra clothes don't need gloves etc cetera, etc cetera, is uh, exactly how my father raised me tough love uh, uh, he didn't know what tough love was but he didn't ha his dad died just before he was born and so he just uh, treated me like uh, I not one of the hired help uh, one of the hired help that he adopted as his son. And so uh, I don't know any different. I don't know any better. And how much of a benefit do you think that was later in your life, as in now? I can't put a number on it. A million times, 500 times, uh, a trillion times, trillion dollars. <laughs> I was going to say. But I mean, um, the, uh, I, I, I tell the kids when I speak, I can't remember the last time I failed. You can't remember the last time you won. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about the, you know, they say one in three, I think one in five more like, don't have a dad at home. Oh, yeah. How do you, how do you fix that? You know, well, the, what, do, the, what do you do the, to fix the, that? The, um, the, the life cycle of poverty is almost impossible to beat. Where I came from, there was three ways out of, of the body. One, uh, you um, were a, uh, a gangster, okay, and you did bad things to people and shit like that. Uh, number two was athletics. Okay, and um, more for, for Mexican kids, more boxing than football or anything like that. Um, and the third was you became a teacher, a, a fireman, or a policeman. 
okay, and you got a, a decent job, and you didn't go to jail. Uh, the, um, but that, there's only three ways out, that's it. And uh, when, I, when I go to speak in, in areas like that, the, um, they look at me as an anomaly. Number one, I'm a widow. I'm a light-skinned Mexican, okay, with blue eyes. And so a lot of uh, Mexican-Americans uh, would say that, um, you know, it's because of my skin. I don't believe that. Uh, my mother swam across the Rio Grande River. With, uh, actually, my grandmother carried her across the Rio Grande River in 1924 when she was three years old. Um, and uh, the only thing my mother uh, asked when she hadn't seen the baby and was born, she wanted to know uh, the color of my eyes. <laughs> That's it. She didn't want to know anything else. And he says, blue. And so if she had died right then, <laughs> she would have died a happy woman, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, the... Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you, uh, even though I got in a lot of trouble, you know, uh, thrown in jail, flunked out of university three times, et cetera, et cetera. He let you, you let you get your ass beat in jail, right? You made a call to the yeah, cops and yeah, let, let him beat yeah, the no, no, Yeah, they, they called my dad and they said, uh, Manny, we got your boy down here. And he says, what did he do? And she said, keep him there. Make him remember it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got the shit knocked out of me uh, over the three or four times, one in county jail and one, uh, one in West Valley. Uh, and uh, one in Redondo Beach, they have their own police force, and uh, I got the, I got the shit dumped out of me. Um, but I still got I kept getting arrested, and all my uh, jail time was um, uh, alcohol induced. Okay, um, I'm not using it as an excuse, but uh, I skipped drugs. Uh, I missed drugs uh, uh, mainly because I was afraid my dad. My dad could understand alcohol. Like he told me, there's only one motherfucking way out of motherfucking drug, drugs, and that's a motherfucking bullet in your motherfucking head, and I'm the motherfucker that'll put it there. Love it. I love hey, it. I mean, that's the only thing I remember, and I said, we'll just pass on drugs. And we're talking about a lieutenant, CIA, World War II. I mean, yep. it, this is Korean War as well. Korean War as well. I mean, this that. is a... I yeah, that's a man. Fuck. Yeah. But, you know, you could see it anyway, and he reminds me a lot... You remind me a lot of uh, my grandfather, and I just don't know what this generation is going to do. Sure. You know, you started off, what, two or three years ago with the snowflake. Now it's what, the woke? I don't even know what woke is. I don't know. What, what is woke? It's this episode is brought to you by Let's Get Checked. Are you the man your father was? Recent studies have shown that men's testosterone levels have dropped substantially since the 1980s at about an average of 1% per year. Think about how old your father was when he was born. For example... If he was 30, your testosterone levels could be 30% lower than his. Low testosterone levels can have all type of health effects on men. It can affect your mood, sex drive, memory, muscle mass loss, you name it. And yes, low testosterone is more common the older you get, but it can affect men at any age. So let's talk about today's sponsor, Let's Get Checked. You can order a testing kit that will be delivered to you in a discreet packaging with next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five days. So, if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com backslash mscsmedia and get 25% off your test using the code mscsmedia. The link is in the description at the top. This podcast is brought to you by Monster Energy. Tear into a can of the meanest energy drink on the planet, Monster Energy. It's the ideal combo of the right ingredients in the right proportion to deliver a big bad buzz that only Monster can. Monster packs a powerful punch, has a smooth, easy drinking flavor. Athletes, musicians, co-eds, road warriors, metalheads, geeks, hipsters, and bikers dig it. You will too. Monster Energy is more than just the green OG. Monster has Monster Ultra. Juice Monster, Monster Hydro, Rehab Monster, Dragon Tea, Monster Max, Muscle Monster, and many more. Buy on Amazon, buy on Walmart, or go to MonsterEnergy.com and believe me, you'll find a place. Unleash the Beast, Monster Energy. Woke is beyond snowflake. Just trophy for everybody, everybody wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the progression with no progression or however you say? You, yeah. You know, if... If there's if everybody gets a trophy to make everybody happy, if if I tap you, if I tap my daughter, if I tap her, technically she could call child Correct. and youth, and I'm done for. And people do it, and they do do it. Yeah, the children uh, diver divorce their parents now. No. Yeah, in court. Uh, yeah, or the mother of the child Correct. will call on the father for tapping the kid. Well, so I don't. How do you, you know, what do you do? 
Well, my dad would have gone to jail for uh, yeah. what they now call child abuse because yeah. when he used to beat the shit out of me. Um, and he used to tell me, Danny, this hurts me more than it does you. And I always wanted to say, what a load of shit that is. <laughs> you know, yeah. But now uh, you know. But dad knew how to hit you without, uh, bruises were below the neck, you couldn't see them. Uh, so uh, he, he knew how to do that. But I would never, I, in my wildest imagination, I would never, you know, call the cops or tell the teachers that my dad was kicking no. the shit out of me. Now, wouldn't happen. Nowadays, these kids will just run the second they can. Yeah. The second they can. And do you know that they even took wood shop out of high school? When Rob told me that, because he's got two boys, that they took wood shop out, I couldn't believe it. That was one of my favorite subjects. I, I could pass. Well, that was the only one I thought was cool. And I mean, I can't build anything, but I thought it was cool to have a drill or a, a saw and everything. And they took cooking class out. Which I thought was great because then if I had a girl's over, I could cook, really. <laughs> she actually liked me, the lady. Right? They took yeah, it out? Yeah, And going back to the kid thing, it's just, it's sad the generation coming up because there's no respect anymore. No one holds the door open. I teach my kids that I was raised by older parents, so I teach them all the time. And I, I just don't understand where we're headed. And then Mr. Pena, the education. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, too, it's shit. If you had a kid right now, would you homeschool them? Yeah, probably. I didn't know what homeschooling was uh, back then. If they had it, maybe they did have it. I certainly didn't know about it. Uh, but uh, who's going to homeschool me? Uh, my dad, who was <laughs> never there. Uh, my mom, who uh, was, was very literate in English, uh, but she didn't know math and those kind of things. So um, I, I don't know who I would have been homeschooled by. But um, whatever education I got, was by osmosis, me sleeping in the back of the room. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, like there used to be a program on TV called Mr. Cotter with uh, Sylvester, no, uh, Travolta back in the 80s where he was just a guy who slept in the back of the class. When I used to bring my uh, books home in junior high school, they used to have a locker about this long, like this. I put my books in the locker and then the last day of school, when I took the books out of the locker, there was a dust line next to the books. None of the books had ever been cracked, opened, um, and the uh, same thing in high school. Unfortunately, three times getting flunked out of university, uh, I, if I couldn't learn it from the back of the room, uh, uh, I didn't learn it. And uh, the, uh, but um, now, um, I mean, the kids today, their biggest challenge uh, is, uh, I say this laughingly, is because somebody likes them or doesn't like them on Facebook, mm -hmm. which is uh, it's just unbelievable. And there's already been studies in the first 15 years of high uh, Facebook that it causes damage. It causes, you know, neurological damage and, and the kids aren't building self-esteem or self-respect and they're killing themselves. I know that if uh, our daughter had, uh, God forbid, had committed suicide over Facebook, and I've said this many times, I would erase the fucking DNA of that family. Wow. I'd kill everybody from the baby through the grandparents, the cats, the fucking dogs, the goldfish. And I'd go to jail. It's your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things we're dying for. Yeah. And, but how do you get this generation out of it? So when, well, you have comes, <clears throat> when you have kids come now to your class, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to touch on that more. But when you do and you, how do you make that choice? Like Brian Rose, what was it with him that he was worth your time? Okay. Uh, a couple of things. I was the father he never had. Okay. Um, the um, uh, kids come to the, uh, the program that have never been screamed at, that have never been disciplined, uh, uh, slapped or spanked, uh, that have never uh, been punished. Um, so how, ca how can they have values about society? Because if you do something wrong, you still go to jail, although they may not keep you in the full term, but you, they, they, there's still consequences. Um, uh, Brian, uh, in my mind, uh, saw that he would be in a different place uh, and he, he loved, as he got, became, became more and more popular, he loved the adulation, okay? Uh, Brian uh, used to take the, uh, maybe he still does, takes the tube to work in the morning. Now he can afford a driver and a car, and a, but he, he likes people saying, hi, Brian, and doing selfies, okay? Because uh, hmm. um, he needs that. Yeah. He need, but now he's not the only one that needs it. He has, you know, two or three million people on YouTube, etc. social media to follow him. They need it more, worse than he does. But a fraction of those two or three million have seen 
or think they know why he's made the change, and I'm, I'm normally given the credit or discredit for, for changing him, and so, so they come to me. Not everybody's a pussy wuss, okay? We used to put vagina cream on the desks <laughs> in the seminars, and I come up and I go like this. <laughs> I say, uh, ladies, you know what this is for, but guys, uh, we're gonna have a webinar. We used to show a film, how to use the vagina cream. <laughs> we didn't put it on YouTube. Um, and the question, uh, you're all cunts. You know, all I see is flapping vaginas out there when I look out in the audience. And the um, when you put those clips out, Mr. Penny, I was so mad at you because you would cut them right. He would cut them right at the best time. Yeah, like, yeah. This fucker, yeah, and yeah, it would yeah. be like go here yeah. to buy. I like, this. I mean, yeah, it was yeah. so good, good and you tease, had to get good it. Good tease, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, at first, I, I think people may may be misunderstood, but I, I saw what you were doing right away. Yeah. You break them down to zero so that you can bring them back up to Correct. the way to way to Because how how else do you do it? Correct. Well, there, there is no other way. And uh, now, the, when I was in the military. I volunteered for the draft at more or less the height of the Vietnam conflict. And I went in, uh, spoiled, not spoiled, but... And uh, volunteered. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> spoiled in the sense that uh, I was able to dodge bullets, Teflon, because my dad was a very high-powered cop. And so I got away with, uh, not murder, but a lot of stuff that I would have normally uh, not gotten away with. But the, the military made a man of me. I, I went in 20 years old, a uh, smart-ass kid that had dodged a few bullets in life. And um, you can, in those days, they still hit you. Uh, when I went through uh, officer training, uh, during the ranger part of officer training, if you got caught, uh, they uh, put battery uh, wires to your testicles. Oh. There's still thousands of lawsuits of guys that can't have kids against the United States Army and U.S. government for uh, putting t uh, battery wires to your testicles. If, if they didn't do that to you, they uh, put you up in a tree and they used to uh, put a rope around your ankle or your wrist and throw you out. In other words, dislocating your hip and or your, your wrist. My, the best man in my wedding, who was an ex-FBI guy now, well, not now, but then when we got out of the military, he got caught in, in a maneuver and they put him on an anthill and they poured honey all over him and left him for three days. He almost died. This is what the training used to be. Now, fast forward to the last 10 years, SEALs go home on the weekend. Rangers go home on the weekend. Delta Force go home on the weekend to have time with their family. They have splash cards. Yeah, and they, they have these cards that uh, 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 leave me alone. Yes, leave me alone. You've pushed me too far. Correct. Uh, what level are you feeling at? But Mr. Pena, and Christ, your father's probably rolling around and it's fucking, you know, whatever. What happens at war? What are you going to do when, when you're at war and you got machines gunpointed at Time out. <laughs> Time out. We had a, a major, Air Force major, who was just getting out of the military uh, uh, maybe six months ago. And he said his, of his battalion, 415 guys, 40 guys won't touch a gun. Oh, boy. They won't touch a gun. And you can't make them touch a gun. They pull out a card. I was at uh, Krakow University in Poland a few years ago speaking as a guest of the government. And um, the, um, I, I asked, uh, in Poland they fought hard, and I, I asked them, vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis them, you know, giving their life for the country. Nobody raises their hand. Nobody, you know, a couple of professors raised their hand. Um, but, but now the, the, the kids, um, they feel entitled, uh, they feel privileged. Uh, uh, like I had a German kid uh, many years ago said, I didn't start the fucking Second World War, I didn't burn the Jews. I mean, why am I being blamed for the Holocaust? We had, and because at that time, Merkel had what I called Holocaust uh, syndrome. She uh, supported the EU for 15 years or so uh, because they felt guilty about what they did uh, to, to the Jews. Um, the, uh, everybody, everybody pushes it off to another generation, mostly past generation, and they take no responsibility. But I mean, we're responsible I mean, uh, everybody's responsible for where we are with the planet. Uh, I don't happen to agree with the global warming horseshit, no. but the, uh, and there's a lot of things I don't agree with. I, I think it's funny, the Chinese government about six months ago, that the young girl Greta uh, was telling the Chinese to stop making so many chopsticks, it saves forests. <laughs> then the Minister of uh, Energy got on TV, uh, Chinese TV, and it wasn't re really related to Western TV. She says, chopsticks are made out of bamboo, dummy. I mean, how much do you know about global warming? And of course, my side of the equation, I'll laugh like hell. But I mean, you know, somebody sort of slapped the snot out of that little bitch a long time ago. And then you have to think, think what China is thinking of us. That all they care about is being the world power, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree? They're patient as hell. They don't have egos like we do. They have do. 50, 100, 200 year plans. 
Right. So they have no problem with suffering. No. To, to me, I see 2024 as the perfect opportunity to invade Taiwan. Biden's under pressure from the public. He sanctions them. China cuts us off. There's no trade. In the meantime, Russia, China, Serbia, Iran, they're kind of all aligning, getting a little bit closer and closer. And then what? If that does happen, then we're fucked. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> Do you see the, something like that? Well, no, well, well I, I was a young NATO officer on the line, uh, more or less like they are now. And I said then, uh, in my infinite wisdom, 1967, 68, 69, we better, we better hope it's, we don't have a land war. Hmm. Because at that time, the Eastern Bloc, the Eastern Germans and all those countries, uh, except for Iran uh, that you alluded to, uh, I mean, first of all, they had two, three, four times more than we did. And uh, they felt no pain, even though we were much better trained, in my opinion, at that time. Uh, and so it, it wouldn't uh, surprise me uh, some disgruntled general or s somebody they're going to blame uh, for pushing the button for a small nuclear uh, bomb to be dropped on uh, someplace. The, 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 the fu not funny, but the strange part about it, everybody's worried about it being dropped on Ukraine. I don't think he's going to drop it on Ukraine. So what? Uh, Ukraine's still not a member of NATO, and they're dragging their feet slowly for him to become a member of NATO for the very reason that if they in do something to a NATO country, ostensibly all the other NATO countries are supposed to gather up and protect him. Okay? Well, I live over there most of the time, and not too many people. They may allow them to come and stay in their house, okay, uh, because they've got no place to sleep. But uh, for them to send their young boys to go die... I don't see that. I don't see that. And the whole thing with Ukraine, and I, I don't know why they never talk about it. N NATO went there seven, eight times. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Nuclear, kids, all kinds of shit going on over there. How did the president of Ukraine get 500 uh, million euros in the bank? Thank you. He was a fucking comedian on TV. And, he made, and that's what he got? He's, he's, his estimated wealth is over 500 uh, million from a comedian on TV yeah. in Ukraine. Wow. Yeah, yeah. From a comedian to, uh, to a president of the country, which I think he doesn't draw a salary. But. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah. Huh? But they had every opportunity to be in NATO. And if you look, I looked at the map, I'm sure you did as well. I actually like Putin. I like Putin. And I see where I think he's like throwing a little bit of haymakers like an asshole. But if you look where he's hitting, he's hitting a lot of nuke spots that they went and investigated all the ones. And also where they're molesting kids, taking kids, and doing that, uh, uh, what is that, that adrenaline thing? The adrenaline of them, yeah. And all that shit. So a lot of places he's hitting isn't just he's hitting. He's hitting it for a reason. Plus, in reality, don't you think the Soviet Union, Ukraine, it's really his or, or not? Well, I, I, I don't you know. You know that shit better than me. That's why I want to know what your opinion the, is. Um, when you're, if he's as ill, and we, uh, one of the kids that just came to the seminar, actually twice, is from Serbia. And he just went back to visit uh, Russia uh, in the last six months. He, said, he says a couple of things. Number one, he said a lot of the news that we exploit in the West uh, is only half true, which I believe that. I don't know which half, though. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, um, that the, um, the Ukrainian, or excuse me, the Russians are, are getting ready for a, a big, some sort of assault. Uh, the, uh, they're amassing two million people. Uh, now, they're, they're not amassing them voluntarily, but... Uh, but they're they're amassing these people. Um, so, so Mr. Penny would uh, voluntarily be you're going to go. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, if you're between 18 and 55, you don't have a choice. I'm no. going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like my my uh, Sicilian grandfather used to do back in the day. Mm. Okay, but they, 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 he is, um, and if he's sick. Uh, as, and some of it's true. If it's leaking out that, you know, he fell down the stairs and he sh shit himself because like, he's got bowel cancer or whatever like that, uh, none of that news is getting out in Russia. Mm -mm. Okay? Yeah, they're, 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 the only way they get it is on, on the black net or whatever and they can get the information. Uh, but, I mean, he's got, he, you know, uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't do uh, uh, some of the things he w uh, is doing now, but he wants to go out with a bang. I don't, I don't blame that. Uh, uh, he wants to go out like... Um, uh, some of the great rulers, uh, the Mongolian rulers, uh, and uh, when you're ill, I've never been that ill, uh, but uh, you, you, you make crazy decisions so, because he's not accountable to anybody. I do believe he's got billions of dollars stashed wherever he can stash it. Um, it's, he wouldn't be the first 
the dictator that uh, stashed money on his way out. Um, but I believe, I know that we could whack him. I, I know positively we could whack him uh, the, with drones and stuff like that. And he has gained about 30 pounds. Uh, the, he, he doesn't look well. Uh, he was always prided himself as being fit. He ran, ran around without a shirt on and stuff like that. Oh, that no, his yeah. horse pictures. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear yeah, pictures. Yeah, but, and, and, and he is, he's probably more fit than anybody else is in a big country. Um, but um, he's going to surprise us. Uh, now, at one time, I was an intelligence officer for NATO, which is kind of like an oxymoron. That's a, uh, like a, that's a, like an ox, that's like an ice cream man selling ice cream. Okay, Mr. Penny, that's mm -hmm. big time shit. But okay, yeah, to yeah, you, yeah. I know it's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But does your instinct tell you he's sick? In your instinct? Oh yeah, it yeah, does. It is. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and and and, and the um, he he's either sicker than he's sane, or no, because he's not saying anything, or he's not as sick, but he's sick. Uh, because you don't make up stories that he crapped himself. I mean, he, he, he wouldn't do that. Uh, he's, he's got too much pride, you know. Uh, he, he wants to be, uh, make Russia, and if you go back, back before World War II, how big fucking Russia was. I mean, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were from uh, up the Mongols uh, down to uh, Ukraine, basically. Uh, they, they covered it like a sixth of the world or a seventh of the world. So from a historical point of view, and he came up through the KGB. And I used to, uh, well, all the KGB guys I know uh, are dead. The, the, my former business colleagues fall into three categories. One dead, two dementia, three in jail. Hmm. Okay, so most of the guys my age uh, don't, get, don't get to be my age. And I was the youngster of that era. I was 10 to 20 years younger than everybody else. I was allegedly the child prodigy, and now I'm, I'm an old guy, and so all those old guys are mostly gone. Uh, but he... The, no easy decision is going to be made there. It's going to end in tears. Uh, I think everybody's underestimating. And when they get the, the bobbing heads on there telling us former this, former that, and those guys were generals and admirals, and I'm not taking anything away from that. But they're not there on the ground. It's like when I see the bobbing heads talking about uh, global warming, and I, and I say uh, there's only one scientific expedition alive today of the 11 that have been to both poles. You're looking at half of it right here. My wife, the other half. We've been to both poles. We sat down with a scientist. And I still remember, if I lived to be a thousand, uh, and he's going through the, um, the samples of the, that they took from the South. The South Pole's on the mountain. Not many people realize that. And he said that uh, 55,000 years ago, the planet was uh, two degrees warmer Celsius. I said, stop, excuse me, doctor. And then he's wearing flip-flops. Mm -hmm. uh, boxer shorts and a t-shirt and he's got hair like this like I, but they all were, look like that the fucking ones yeah, they yeah. know too and he said yeah yeah and then I said what about global warming and all these scientists just <laughs> start laughing at me and uh, I'll never forget that you know and these guys that get on get on the TV have never been there have never talked to these guys now when we went to the uh, North Pole it's a 99% it's, it's a, it's a Russian deal uh, we, we had two interpreters with us uh, but they basically say the same thing, uh, and they also say, uh, "Who gives a fuck?" I can't I can't repeat it in Russian anymore, but I used to be able to say, "So what?" Now the new thing, if you've been studying this in the last two or three weeks, oh boy. the Siberian um, uh, icebergs and glaciers are melting, and oh. about fifty thousand years ago there was a virus on the Earth. Oh. It's coming from Siberia. Oh, and, is that it, so? <laughs> and just like in the movies, it, it lives. <laughs> Now, when it melts, it lives. Oh, I saw and it's that. it's coming down from Siberia. I saw that. And between five and 25 years, depending on the ice flow, yeah. that Siberian virus is going to be on us. Um, and hardly anybody talks about it. Um, the, um, Did they hire uh, Scorsese for that? No. <laughs> they, they, they might have, but I, I don't think so. Um, but I, now I'm not jealous, but I, uh, Al Gore's a smart fuck. And he's pretty much the guy that promoted all this. When, when Sally and I were at the South Pole, Al Gore was there. Um, we didn't see him there, but he was taking a plane from uh, uh, su southern Chile back to the United States. And, uh, of course, he said that by now, uh, you know, uh, basically the, in 2008, 6, 7, 8, he said the North South Pole would be gone uh, by 2013, 15. Well, here we are, 2000, about to be 2023. It's not gone. Uh, the, uh, a new study came out, two new studies came out this year. One by NATO, 3,700 pages. Uh, maybe I'm the only fucker that read it. 
It says, it don't too. worry about global warming. We're past it. Mm -hmm. The human race is finished. Okay. You go back to 2004 when Professor Hawkins of Cambridge, who passed away the last couple mm -hmm. of years, he said in Great. 2004, we're got a slightly bigger brain than a fucking chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. We're on a second or third uh, rate planet. We're past it. Now, mm -hmm. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos both say the same thing. The reason why they want to be a second planet um, uh, species is because right. they know we're through. Yeah. Now, whether we're through in 50 years or 500 years, I don't know. But uh, that 3,700 page uh, study said, in 500 or 1,000 years, if we stopped and did everything everybody wants to do about global warming, everything, we'd still have, uh, the world would be fucked, uh, and we'd still have pollution 500 to 1,000 years from now. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean... Uh, and, and when they first came with the global warming, all you had to do was look at a history book, yeah. and you would know that this has happened constantly, consistently. So it's a great marketing tactic, great uh, business, I guess, to fuck everybody, but... It's bullshit, total bullshit. And you were the first one to come out publicly and completely go against it at your you know, level. Now, I wanted to ask you, this Idaho case thing, have you been paying attention to that with the four girls that got stabbed, two didn't? Somebody went in and stabbed four girls. There were six people in the house at college. Rob, can you explain that a little bit better? Yeah. The, the, if you didn't see it, forget it. I just wanted bunch, your opinion. A bunch of college did. kids uh, were in a house. They came home. They were found murdered the next day, stabbed in their necks, and some people are saying it's the father, others, I believe it's like a love triangle, but it's been months now. It's a small, little, tiny, tiny little town in Idaho, and they can't figure out who did this. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, the um, I, I remember reading about it a few months ago, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't follow up, but, the, um, but there's, there's something else added to that. The kids were uh, not related, but they had something to do with each other other than being students. I can't, rem uh, I can't recall what I just, it was. I just remember the big, the big timeline. There was a big gap in the timeline. And then they had come out with video that she was leaving the bar and they, they, they could hear her talking car. about the bartender and they were looking for a car. And <clears throat> some people have speculated the father. I, I thought maybe you had seen it no. because I know you, you read body language yeah, very yeah. well. And I just saw the father, and I hate to even say this, you know, just because who, who the fuck knows, you know, there's nuts out there. But just based on body language, you'll never, again, I don't know anything any more than anybody, but you'll never see him like this on TV. Now he just lost his kid, so who knows. But when constant like that, looking, never just like this, never. And I was just wondering, in your opinion, how, well, how I'm somebody could come and stab four fucking people and two other people are in the house and they get away and nobody knows? Yeah, they yeah that sounds uh, drugged shitty. Trump. But speaking of body language and eye contact, when you look back at the interviews between um, Trump and Obama together, Trump is looking him right in the eyeball and Obama's looking down. Every time they meet, okay? And the other body language is um, uh, Obama's legs are uh, pointed away from Trump Trump is uh, is right Almost in his face, yeah. Um, and there's a lot to be said about that. The, uh, but speaking, you know, now let me say something positive about. Well, I don't, I don't like Obama. I don't like his presidency. I don't, I, I don't, I don't care uh, what good he tried to do or didn't do. What I about do the know. Trillion in the plane. It, pardon? How did he pull off the trillion in the plane, or however much he got on that plane? I, um, I, I don't know. That. <laughs> we but, all but, I, know. But, I, but I do know it, it's one of the two greatest examples of quantum leap in history. As a 19-year-old little junior drug, drug addict in California, he said, I'm going to be the first black president, okay? Whether he was delusional or not, and then when he became the first black president. Yeah, you have to give him credit. Okay, give him. The second, um, and perhaps slightly a bigger quantum leap, is when John F. Kennedy, the president, during his inaugural address said, we're going to land a man on the moon this decade and bring him back safely. In July in 69, when the guys landed on the moon, when he said that, there was no NASA. We didn't have a rocket that could lift a fucking monkey off the ground. Hmm. We had no infrastructure. Millions of permutations had to happen. Not dissimilar to uh, uh, President Obama's. Uh, and we did it. Um, but those, are, I mean, quantum leap is when it's not supposed to happen, when there's tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands or even millions of things have to connect the dots. And uh, we now, and now we're talking about going back into space and we're going back to the moon and uh, eventually we're gonna go back to, uh, not eventually, we'll go, we will go back for the first time, go to, not back, to uh, Mars, et cetera. But we're, you know, 
Homo sapiens done. I mean, the, they call me a Neanderthal, which I take as a compliment. I would say. Neanderthal has a brain 20% bigger yeah. than Homo sapien, number one. I have the Neanderthal 13th rib. I have an extra rib. Right, right, they, right here, right? Right at the top, yeah. okay? Almost right, right where the uh, reptile uh, per, per, persecutor is, right? right? Yep. Uh, my dad had a 13th rib. Uh, we don't know if his dad, because his dad died. <laughs> but, uh, and we haven't checked our sons. Our sons don't want to know if they have a 13th rib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they, they would, uh, I think they tell people to piss off, but I think that they would be uh, insulted because, you know, you're, you're back one step back towards... Uh, uh, humanity, and uh, and if you believe the reptile angle, you're one step back yeah. to a lizard. Oh, okay. you can look at it that way or another way. Yeah. What's that wrong? Going back to what we talked about earlier, though, do you think, I think in my opinion, the United States in general, um, we've lost a sense like masculinity is a bad thing Oof. now, right? Oh, it's bad to be a man. It's bad to be this. Like, you know, I was always taught, and it's not saying women can't have jobs and can't get paid well, but you always are supposed to take care of your woman. Like, that's the man's job. And now it's looked upon as they just try to destroy masculinity. That's so out of sync with the way people think now. Uh, that, um, you think and that's when, destroyed well, a lot of No, I, well, I mean, it's, uh, first of all, in my opinion, one man's opinion is fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. that's, that's number one. Uh, I remember uh, several years ago, uh, there was a short lady in first class, and she couldn't, wasn't tall enough to get her thing above her, what do you call it? So she was trying, to, with a tight skirt, she was trying to get her foot up on the chair, so she, and so I took it out of her hands, and I, and she turned to me and said, I, can't, I don't need your fucking help. Mm. I didn't say anything, the, the guys in first class didn't say anything. As life would have it, we're in Manhattan, uh, 55th and something, and uh, I see her going up the escalator ahead of me. <laughs> I don't think anything of it, okay? And she's in the meeting, She's a lawyer for the oh, sure. other side in the same fucking meeting. So I started howling when I walked in, and they said, uh, what's so funny? And I said, her. <laughs> and they thought I was teasing her because she was short. And then um, I, I don't need to explain anymore. She yeah, can tell you. that was great. And, and so, but she, in the same meeting, and, the, uh, and so then, then when the meeting was over, I waited so I could hold the door for her. <laughs> on purpose, on purpose. You know, she stood there for a second, mm -hmm. looking at me like she's not going to go through. But there's people behind her, so she she but, accepted my uh, quasi invitation by holding the door. But there are women like that, you know. The, the um, fine, God bless them. Um, but uh, I was taught, as you mentioned before, we got on film, hold the door, get up when a woman enters his room, blah 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 blah. And if I didn't, boom, I got a whack. Yep. Anybody, anybody older than you. But they're yeah. trying to destroy that masculinity is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's like, it's, it's very sad because uh, it just... They're just, trying to make it a negative thing so that they can divide and control. That's what it's all about. I mean, look at animals. A, a, a lion, a male lion takes care of the female lion. He fights off, uh, you know, other lions. He fights off predators. It's just in the whole psyche of everything. But the female lion does all the hunting. He lays on his ass. And eats his <laughs> well, she cooks. Yeah, she cooks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to go to the penguin. She cooks. Now food. the penguin, that guy, he's walking forever <laughs> to get food uh -huh. and forever back while she holds them eggs. Yeah, aren't they amazing? Yeah. Have they, you ever been around them? Yeah. Well, I mean, I know you've been everywhere in yeah, the fucking well, world. At the South Pole. Yeah, we were. Well, mm -hmm. Is it amazing to see in person where it touches you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But the the one that really touched my wife and I. When we went to uh, Rwanda uh, and the uh, and we uh, traversed uh, with the uh, silverback gorillas, oh wow! I mean, which are endangered, and they have people with guns walking around with them. And the male uh, gorilla, the senior gorilla, we went twice. Uh, and the senior male was a guy named Charlie. That's and, so yeah, cool. yeah. And and the uh, you, you, they can touch you, but you can't touch them. And uh, the Charlie at that time had 19 wives, uh, and all he did was fornicate and eat <laughs> and sleep. Yeah. Okay, and I still remember because uh, I saw him fornicate twice. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, but the, when the third, we were there about three hours, and the third, he just pushed her away. Uh, <laughs> He's done. He tired. I can't take him. He's tired. But two years later, we go back to see the same gorillas, and I was naive enough, and I'm not naive, uh, naive about anything, to think that he was going to remember me. Yeah. But he remembered my wife. They like blondes. Oh. And the little teenage gorillas that are much smaller would come and push Sally. So if the gorilla push it, touches you, you can touch it back. 
And so uh, there was another blonde in our group, and she was a uh, university student from Canada. I think she was a PhD candidate. And it was cute as hell to see and Charlie just, you know, uh, that's all they do. But, but it's really something special. I mean, it, we were touched and we were blessed. In fact, Sally and I are talking about going back uh, to Rwanda. Uh, and because it's such a beautiful, right? uh, it's such a beautiful thing. And uh, but people are still trying to talk and kill them. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Do you think plants and trees and such? Do you think they have conscience? I don't know about conscience, but I know they have a something, an essence. Something, I, right? I, I think they have a, a, a. I wouldn't call it a soul, but uh, spirit maybe yeah, something. Because yeah. like you yeah. know, like but all energy is the same. When I go, you go. That energy just trans transposes into something else. And the, um, uh, the um, I often say I'm going to come back as a cult leader, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it would take, it, I could <laughs> form a cult faster than I did a trillion dollars. I mean, I'd be tax-free. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. Can't get in one of those reserves. Yeah. You're yeah. good to go. You, you own the law. Yeah, that's correct. That's, that's correct. the winning way, right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, fuck. Now, I'll tell you what we were both right about. You're the man, but I'm just the peanut over here. Back maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, my friend, he had bought that Bitcoin shit. I don't know. It was like 70 cents, blah, 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 blah. He made 11, 12, 20 million, blah, blah. Okay. I, well, they, he, that was 16 years ago in the sense, because that's when it started 16 years ago. To the point of the question is what I want to ask you, is when there's billions of dollars like that floating around, right? How is there no puppet master? How in the fuck could there not be a puppet master? Somebody controlling it, somebody manipulating. How is that possible? Okay. To me, for, for there to be billions of dollars somewhere in the air, someone is controlling it. I don't see how this episode is brought to you by Fiji. More than just water. This is not just rock. It's ancient volcanic rock that filters tropical rain, giving it double the electrolytes and its signature soft, smooth taste. It's not just water. It's Fiji water. This episode is sponsored by Aurora. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? For years, this crime rate has been surging and affecting millions of Americans. I'm talking about identity theft, and there's a new victim every 14 seconds. Yet despite this, those who have had their identity stolen are often shocked when it happens. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aurora, who is sponsoring this video. Aurora is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all into one easy-to-use app. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. Protect you and your family from America's fastest-growing crime. Try Aurora for free for two weeks and see if you or anyone in your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial today. Go to Aurora.com slash mscs the link is in the description below oh that's not possible well eight nine ten years ago i said uh there were um i said bitcoin was a scam yeah, but i said this who are the two people that would benefit most from um a disruption of the u.s economy china and russia mm -hmm. okay about two years ago china shut it down uh if they had been the uh, uh initiator of bitcoin they shut it down because it fucked up their economy not our economy. So that China just said, you're out of Bitcoin. So the only one that's left is Russia, and that would be Putin. And for people that believe some Japanese uh, physicist in a cave invented Bitcoin, what are you smoking? Give me some of that shit. I mean, it's, it's not possible. I think Putin owns it. Oh, well, well some, and you might see uh, just one theory, one man's opinion, when Putin dies, let's say he dies in the short or intermediate term, um, and if there's nobody within the Russian government, if it is Russia that is behind it, uh, there's a high probability than before that Bitcoin will go to zero. And the, um, we had this big uh, sell-off from 69,000 or something like that down to as low as 13,000. It's currently 16,000, 17,000, which coincidentally is the current cost to produce a fucking Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Is that so? That's correct. Hmm. It's about sixteen thousand and change, um, up from four or five thousand. Uh, and you, you talk about global warming; it's one of the shittiest things you can do vis-a-vis -vis the environment yep. because of the energy that it, it burns up. And the um, so I mean, uh, and uh, I grossly underestimated. I didn't think PayPal would take it. I didn't think all these other people would take it. I just had no idea. Uh, and as uh, uh, J uh, Jamie Dimon uh, said, the um, 
CEO, big uh, banking CEO said, I think it's dog shit, but my customers want dog shit, so we're gonna give them dog shit as a product, okay? Uh, when Sally and I were at uh, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway's uh, uh, shareholders meeting uh, earlier this year in Omaha, Nebraska, and, uh, Omaha, Nebraska uh, Charlie Munger, other than I hope these guys live forever, but boy, do they look a lot older in person. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, they are ancient looking, okay? Uh, but Charlie Munger said it's Rat Poison Square, and I'm not sure what that means, Rat Poison Square, but uh, the, um, um, it's, uh, it's, it's like... Um, it's like a cult going to that meeting. Uh, there's 30, 35,000 people that are just ranting and raving um, uh, positive accolades about uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, about Warren Buffett, and about Charlie Munger. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, but I mean, Bitcoin is, is just, is, is my opinion, is a con. Now, this recent thing with the kid, uh, it just was announced yesterday, I believe, dating back more than a year he started transferring assets, mm -hmm. okay? There was supposed to be a $5.6 billion reserve fund. Mm -hmm. When the lawyers got in there, there was only $560,000. And they said that it's gonna make Enron, the fiasco at Enron, mm -hmm. who I, I, uh, I was close to that fiasco, from, uh, from afar, the actual head of Enron was a neighbor of mine. Uh, he lived about, I don't know, 10 blocks or six blocks away from me in Houston. Uh, it's gonna make, this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be the worst uh, fiasco in, in the history of finance. Uh, and a lot of people got burned. A lot of people got burned. Brady, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people. Yeah. Who, who all got burned in that? There I'm Brady, uh, a bunch of celebrities. Well, he, oh, yeah, well, uh, the, um, a bunch of actors uh, that got paid a gazillion oh, yeah, dollars. Yeah. And, you know, I, yeah, and he came out, and, he, and then, I don't know why, Dude. they came out and said, well, I didn't even know what it was. Well, you yeah. endorsed it, Shaquille. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's why, yeah, I guess, the, what do you say when your back's up against the yeah, wall, yeah. right? Although he's a shrewd investor. He's made some really, unlike a lot of ball players or athletes that wind up with nothing, mm -hmm. he's not one of them. Uh, my uh, favorite is um, uh, Larry Holmes, uh, the grill, uh, his grills. Uh, George uh, Foreman. Foreman, I mean. Yeah, he, yeah, he made a killing. Oh, yeah. How I about mean, Magic Johnson? Yeah, yeah. L.A. Dodgers. Yeah, he bought Man. the Dodgers. Lakers. Lakers. Uh, I think Buster still has that, but he's he was right right about to buy it, but he got sick of Jeannie Buster's shit, and I think Phil did too, or she got sick well, of Phil, one of the two. What's your opinion on a guy like LeBron James? I mean, he's a powerful uh, guy. Well, he's a powerful uh, spokesperson uh, for the black community. I don't know much about him other than um, the um, a lot of the guys uh, think that their shit doesn't smell anymore hmm. when they get to that status, and I've no not not the current generation. And uh, LeBron is part of the current generation, but previous generations I, I've known a few, and um, they, they fall into two categories: either they're humble as hell, okay, and don't know what all the fuss is about, uh, but most of them aren't at that end of the continuum. They're at the other end of the continuum that you know uh, they probably squandered a lot of their money they made. Um, uh, using bad advisors, etc., and now they're uh, penniless. I remember um, in the 70s, early 70s, I, I was at the um, Caesar's Palace, and there was a big line of people, and I could, you know, I went up to the front, and Joe Lewis is sitting there okay. signing autographs for five dollars each. Uh -huh. it made me cry. Uh -huh. And Steve Wynn, who was the general manager of Caesar's before he got in his own deal, uh, gave him a job. And I mean, hundreds, maybe even a couple thousand people would line up to get Joe Lewis's signature for five bucks. Mm -hmm. I go, fuck. And he owed, I don't know, eight million in taxes or something because, you know, um, that's what the guys do. Um, they should have a, a few classes in tax, taxes before when they get, start to make that kind of money. Um, but um, a lot of the athletes wind up with nothing. And that's, you know. <clears throat> My problem with them nowadays is like Tom Brady, Kobe Bryant, they played hurt. Like when the Sixers and Lakers played, Kobe played that whole final series in the NBA championship, knee against knee. I know you know what that kind well, of feels feel like. like. Played all seven games, didn't tell anybody. LeBron and, and Curry and those guys that you hear about now, they have a broken fin finger, they don't play. They would ask Kobe, Jordan, guys like that. Whatever Jordan did off the court, he did off the court. But on the court, Fans paid money to come see. Correct. As long as I can move, I'm going to play, especially some of the greatest boxers that you got to see in your time. Yeah. 
Who, who do you think was the greatest boxer in your time? Because you got to see the best. Well, He's Rocky Graziano. Rocky Graziano. No. Yeah. Undefeated, 50, I think 50 fights. Uh, he was on the humble end. Yeah, you know. Uh, well, I saw Tyson fight. Uh, he certainly, he's more humble now. Yeah. yeah. But he certainly wasn't humble then. When you saw him in his prime, because I was just growing up, is that the he fiercest looked, he, puncher he, 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 you've he, ever he seen? He looked like a, a Robocop. Um, he hit people either hand, almost like there was no defense. <laughs> and, 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 and when they go like this, I just took a boxing nine weeks ago as, uh, when I turned 77 That's so to, great. to, to uh, get out of my comfort zone. And I got this uh, ex-UK uh, champ. Uh, he's, uh, when he fought, he fought at about 175. But I mean, uh, and I, I wrote about it uh, online. I'll get back to the question. Sure, the, sure. Um, uh, I did five two-minute rounds, and I was ready to die. Yeah. Literally. Fucking die. He was getting the stool out for me to sit. I mean... I'm are you all right? I'm gone. <laughs> About the third two minute round. Had enough? No. <laughs> but I saw Tyson when hitting few the glove and knocking people out. <laughs> few the fucking glove when you're shielding like this. And I go, God. But I told you about this when I was in the second row when uh, he knocked out uh, Burbick and the, the sweat off his head, he was hitting with such velocity, was hitting me in the face like BB guns. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, uh, but nobody looked more surprised than Tyson when he knocked him out. But uh, then he got into the uh, regimen or protocol of knocking guys out in the first round. Then he, he was surprised he didn't knock him out in the first round because some of those big guys could take a fucking punch. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for, for the lay person, the, the wuss that's walking down the street, all of them can take a punch. Yeah. The, uh, but uh, Tyson could hit like a train. I like Floyd Patterson. Uh, he he yeah. could hit um, uh, what is uh, poke what do they call it peekaboo style yeah, yeah. peekaboo just pops yeah, yeah. up and just all yeah, of a sudden yeah. you're on the ground yeah yeah um, but there were some, there's some great athletes uh, but I mean uh, uh, boxing is uh, not the ultimate sport but uh, when a lot of my kids take martial arts and they, uh, this and that uh, but they're not doing full contact in karate they're not doing full contact. I like when you you can get knocked out your ass and knocked out. Now we're starting boxing again in the seminars this in January next month. We during Corona Rona we took it out, but every single time that we fought pre Corona, somebody got seriously hurt, but we didn't put it on YouTube. Okay, I mean hospital hurt. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but they they come out there. Uh, one minute, we just did one uh, two-minute round. They came out there like life and death. <laughs> but a lot of the guys fight like this, like girls. Like cats. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the best boxers we had were women. We had three gals that could fight, that had taken, you know, fought in university, college, and, and the girls. And we luckily, two of them were in the same seminar, and uh, they both said on their paperwork, you box, we boxed a little. One had been an AAU champ, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And those girls went at it really good. How about that for you to watch yeah. to see yeah. that? And then we had two Vietnamese, a little guy and a little girl. Same height, same weight. And I told the Vietnamese guy, take it easy on her. So they get in there, and she knocks him on his ass. <laughs> but then about the first 10 <laughs> seconds. So then he looks up at me. And so then she, it was, it was, the fight was on. <laughs> it's so great. That's what I think they need to do for kids is have more kids take martial arts. Because yeah. you see the bullying stuff. Yeah. And the bullying stuff is because you let it happen. So you stand up to somebody and know how to do it. They're not going to pick on you anymore. Yeah. That's, that's the problem with these kids. Well, it's they're all just, about control. Correct. They want to control everything. That, and that will go against their control. Because if you want to, if you all for that, then you can defend yourself. Then you can't say bullying because... If somebody hits you, hit them the fuck back. It That's only makes you a stronger and better person. He right? hits you, you hit him back. Yeah. And he feels it. My fucking dad, he would, feels if it. I came home from, my, not my dad, my grandfather, if I came home from school with a fight, he wasn't worried about detention. He'd say, get in the car. We'd go look at the other kid. If I looked worse <laughs> than the other kid, I got my ass kicked again. Mm -hmm. If the other kid, even if we were both beat up, you know, fucked up, as long as I looked better than the other one, okay, you want to go to McDonald's? If not, when I got home, and he'd I solve made, a lot of problems if yeah, kids stood up. No, for I mean that's how he was in grammar school. 
where I dropped the aquarium on the teacher. We went back <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, but uh, This is all on uh, Dan's uh, YouTube, yeah. which will all be in the description. The Four Seasons did not have the monitor in here that they said that they would, but we will have this in, in post, okay. Dan, for you. Uh, so uh, we went to visit the school, Doris Place, uh, in East L.A., and so uh, it took us weeks to set it up. I don't know why, and the headmaster uh, principal was there, a uh, nice uh, Mexican guy, about 40 years old. So we're, we're going around, in, in, and I had never been in the school uh, in, since uh, I left, uh, just shortly after I dropped the aquarium on the teacher. And so I, I thought, God, the rooms really look smaller. Well, I was a little kid last time I was there. So then we went to the closet that I used to be uh, put in um, uh, until my parents picked me up. And then we went to the window. And now they have uh, like a, a shield thing that you can't put something through the window. Now, I don't know how long that's been there. Let's see this. Yeah, but, uh, and, and so uh, I start to sniffle, and Sally says, what's wrong? This is where I dropped the aquarium on my teacher. And so the, the, the principal said, you what? I beg your pardon? And so he says, yeah, uh, do you remember why? No, well, he obviously pissed me off, but I said no, I, but uh, I took a lot of abuse in school, and if the teacher hadn't stepped or moved, five, six inches, it would hit him right in the head, it would have killed him. That but instead, it hit him in the shoulder, and his shoulder was down here. I mean, I remember that. And I was carted off, and uh, they didn't just throw me out of school, they threw me out of the school district. Mm -hmm. And that's why how we wound up going to the valley, where my mo mom thought, well, he'll be in the valley with white kids, and he won't get in trouble. I got, it that's why I got arrested. I got, <laughs> you know, I, and I used to think, what the fuck, my kids are smart. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I could learn some shit, learn some yeah, strategy, yeah, right? Yeah, I can learn some shit. Uh, but um, so we walked around the schoolyard, and there's, there used to be a game called Foursquare. It was like this, squares like this, and you used to bounce the ball. And uh, and so a guy cheated me, and I said, Sally, I broke a guy's arm in seven places right here. And he uh, and she says, Well, why don't you tell the principal, uh, Mr. So and So, exactly what happened? Well. He kept on cheating, and I said, okay, if you do that once more, and I said, I'm going to knock the shit out of you. So I knocked him down, and apparently I had only broken his arm in one place. But he was whining like a bitch, so I said, I'm going to show you what a broken arm feels like. So I stopped his arm three or four times and broke it in six more places. I got thrown out of school for that. Then we walk across the schoolyard, tetherball, you know, a tetherball. And I said, I put a guy's eyes out here. You know, here. And then I said, this is memory lane for me, you know? <laughs> and so the teacher's just going, but uh, they sent me a, a video from the, uh, we started a um, scholarship fund there uh, for music. And music is now supposedly, I, I have no facts for, pro or con, supposedly the, the new soother of uh, the, the beast in you. So uh, they have a little band, so Sally and I funded the first year of the scholarship fund. And he said that, uh, and he, and with a tear in his eye, he said, does it hurt you to be here? No, that doesn't hurt me. And I said, uh, would you have done the things over again? Probably yes. I, I'd be a disingenuous old man if I lied. Uh, but uh, the teachers and the school system allowing to get to the point that I was so frustrated as a kid in, in grammar school, one through six, uh, th that's what I blame him for. And I, I say facetiously, which, which is true, there's no statute of limitation to what they did to me. I could sue the L.A. City Schools for a trillion dollars. Really? Yep. And when I say that, I'm sure the, the school no, administrator. That's what made you. Yeah, that's well, what made that's you what made me. And so. Uh, it's good that you. That yeah, you, but, you, uh, but but the yeah. uh, and my mother used to walk me to school, five blocks away, so they couldn't see her walking me, <laughs> and she'd hang behind a tree like this and see me get onto the school grounds. Uh, but in those days, keep your mouth shut, don't make trouble, keep your head down. Uh, and don't get in fights. Well, I didn't do any of those. Um, but I stood uh, in the corner like that with a dunce cap, two, three hours, mm -hmm. and then I'd ask to go to the bathroom and they wouldn't let me. So I'd piss and shit my pants. I remember my aunt picking me up with feces running down my pant leg. And my, uh, my uh, mom's older sister, who she was, was a feisty bitch. And so um, she tried to punch the teacher and that didn't do me any good. And so, uh, or my dad would send a cop car, which you can't do now, uh, or probably then, to pick me up, to get me off campus and bring me back to the uh, city hall in uh, Los Angeles, where uh, my dad was headquartered when he was um, in the robbery division. So all this stuff made me. 
Honestly. Yeah, it, I think it all had to happen for you to be the way you are. And now you're paying it forward to all these younger individuals, mid-level individuals, people that you would never think. And, you know, as we'll get to, you got some huge, huge deals. Correct. Um, <clears throat> with this whole Trump thing that they did the other day, you know, the referral to the DOJ. Did, did you see that? Yeah, but uh, it I also sounded read to me like, like, like they're trying to hit him with king. Well, well the, the congressional uh, committee has no authority. No. Uh, they can't try him. He can still run for president even if he's convicted. He can run for president if he's in jail. He can be in jail yep. and be president correct. too. That's exactly correct. I didn't believe it. Yeah, uh, I, uh, one of the yeah, CIA guys it. told me I didn't believe it. We looked it up yeah. multiple times. Yeah, I, I tried Brave, yeah. Dan, Mr. Pena. I tried Chrome and it's there. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, but um, I know, full disclosure, I knew Donald in another lifetime. Uh, we shared the same lawyers in New York City uh, back in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, but he's a lot rougher than the people think. I mean, fuck, he hasn't done anything yet. He had, other than people that he's got, allegedly he's got a black book that used to be this thick, it's now this thick. I don't know if that's true or not, but he believes in getting even. I mean, now would they be doing the Korean shit if he was president? I doubt it. I, I doubt it so. because, I mean, Trump, not that he's crazy or he push a button or anything like that, um, but I, God forbid if there is a nuclear whatever used by Russia, Trump's not going to use one tit for tat. No, 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 no. He's going to take an opportunity. Oh, I thought it was 10 they dropped. Okay. Moscow's gone. St. Peter's <laughs> gone. And, and, and these, and what people, I think, whether you like Trump, hate Trump, it doesn't matter. He was like you, a, a killer negotiator. Correct. So he went to, I can never say his name right, King John Um by himself. Secret Service, I'm sure, wanted to be right there. No, let me talk to him by myself because I'm sure you would agree. Guys of that nature in the mind, yeah, yeah. it's respect. When you come one-on-one, -on -one, not with your whole team, and talk one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, look, you can make North Korea like more modern like the U.S. and you know have the Olympics and basketball or talk to China, and you're never going to get your way with China but make a deal with Russia. All right, you want to blow part of Ukraine up? All right, blow this part up, but you negotiate. And you know he's fucking nuts. You never know what he's going to do, and he keeps that fear there. So whether you liked him or not, his policies were good. He had all the countries that I saw at least willing to negotiate seriously where they weren't going to just make a move like you're seeing now. Where do you think he went wrong? Uh, well... He allowed his alligator mouth to overload his hummingbird ass, which people with big egos, myself included, all have a tendency to do if left unaltered. No, nobody really fucked with him. I mean, so, and uh, the, uh, but he didn't believe he was gonna win. It was, it was after the fact, well, fuck, I won. Of course, Hillary Clinton, suicidal, because she thought she was gonna win. Did she have all the fireworks ready to go off and yeah, paid yeah, for and everything? Yeah. Big party, big party. <laughs> Philly, then, Philly. She, you know. Uh, Rained on her parade. Yeah, the, um, he, he, he really believes that you can do anything. I, I believe as well you can do anything. Uh, the difference is he, he was born uh, rich and he had, he had money. Um, but the fact is that he, I, I believe this next time when he runs, uh, a lot of the good stuff that he's done, which he has done a lot of good stuff uh, with his money that nobody uh, talks about, uh, he's going to use to bring some of the other side over. With all the shit he's been involved with, roughly a third of the country still support him. They're vehement supporters. They're crazy about him. Uh, that's why he fills up the, the stadiums like he did. Uh, the drawback is that many of his uh, people that he endorsed didn't get reelected. Uh, the... Uh, but a few of the people that he endorsed uh, maybe shouldn't have got elected. Uh, they just happened to be Republican, and he endorsed them. Uh, I have friends down here uh, that uh, Cuban descent, uh, mentees of mine, very, I call them the Goomba brothers. Mm -hmm. I call them gangsters, not gangsters. But I mean, I've never met a, 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 a Cuban that their father didn't swim, uh, uh, being chased by sharks from Cuba with $2 in his pocket and a torn t-shirt. I never met a Cuban, but, you know, that's the story. It's, it's like they have a cue card. That's what they yeah, say yeah. when they land. Um, Research but, a little bit more than a sentence, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but have become friendly with, a, uh, is it Key Largo? Key Largo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Key Largo establishment. Um, 
the uh, apparently the um, invasion of, of his estate to get the documents, etc. I'm sure he took home trophies. You know, I'm not saying I wouldn't have either. Whether he took home uh, top secret documents, I don't know. Um, but um, when you're president, you have a top secret clearance forever. So I mean, uh, I'm not justifying anything he's done. But he's not looking uh, for uh, permission, uh, and he's certainly not looking for forgiveness. So, so we'll see. But he's going to shake up the election. He's going to shake up the election. I, I think it's acute or funny or strange, uh, whatever word you wanted to use to describe it, that um, in the last week or so, uh, somebody was saying about Biden's going to be uh, uh, just turned 80. He's going to be 82 if he gets reelected. And he said, I don't, nobody has to tell me how fucking old I am, you know. I know. <laughs> you know? He'd be 86 when he got out of the presidency. Uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, heretofore, was the oldest president. He was 78 when he got out. Now, whether he had early onset dementia, I don't know. Uh, he certainly didn't make that many public appearances his last year and a half. So there may be some truth in that. But um, the, uh, and the current governor here. Uh, is, is, is taking a shot, and so we'll see. Shot, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the uh, uh, my, my mentee used to be governor, uh, Rick Scott, and now he's the senator. Uh, the um, uh, he's also the founder of the largest healthcare co healthcare company in the world, history of the world, Columbia Healthcare. With uh, Lance, right? Yeah, uh, my buddy who ended up going to jail for twenty five years got out on Corona with uh, this whole Jamie Dimon situation. You, you know Lance? Yeah. What a great guy. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, he went through some tough time. If he's watching this, I text him once in a while. What a great man. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, um, but I thought Rick was going to make a run for president. But I didn't. Uh, yeah. If, but if, he, he's a smart guy. I mean, super smart. He used to be my lawyer. And I remember we're in New York about 86-ish. And allegedly, I just put $50 million in my pocket from a deal. We're at the Park Lane Hotel uh, drinking Bloody Mary. He didn't drink. Okay, or he drank poorly. Uh, <laughs> so three or four Bloody Marys into the thing. He says, yeah, uh, Dan, I, I need to make your kind of money. What, you, got, you got to stop working for me. You got to go out. And so then he went down and teamed up with uh, Sid and Perry Bass, the billionaires from Fort Worth, and the rest is history. But uh, he, he, uh, he is extremely, there's, there's a couple of stories about him. He worked his way through college. He owned a, a Dunkin' Donut, one Dunkin' Donut. He put himself through uh, undergraduate school. And then he bought a second Dunkin' Donut, has history or rumor, it says, to put himself through law school. Okay, so he had two Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, and in the, uh, in the 80s, his wife uh, 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 drove an Oldsmobile, if I remember correctly, a uh, station wagon. And the Oldsmobile had a crack from the lower left-hand part of the window to the upper right-hand part of the window. And he, where the radio goes, he had a transistor radio hanging from the mirror. Uh, most of the kids that listen don't even know what a transistor radio. And so, because, and his wife would contend that uh, Rick, who was tight with his money, I, I'm informed he still is, um, <laughs> I didn't think that the radio added value. And uh, unless the insurance company was gonna pay for that fucking broken window, he wasn't fixing it. Now you think that's one in a million, ten, a trillion, right? No. Bunker Hunt, one of my early mentors, um, um, picked up at the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth airport, uh, his wife, uh, and Bunky, as we used to call him, and so uh, crack is from this side of the window to that side of the window, okay? Just the opposite, but the same crack. And transistor radio hanging from the fucking rear view mirror. Oh, these fucking transistor radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they were made and, and, and they had and, some and, glitches. And, and Mrs. Hunt said, uh, I'm embarrassed to drive you, and this uh, Mr. Pena, Pina, as she called me, she says, but Bunky won't let me get unless the insurance pays for the fucking window. I she didn't say it. fucking. I love it. And, and uh, the radio added no value. I never thought I'd see that twice. That's fine. Okay. What's, uh, what's the lesson to be learned from that? Well, I mean, uh, they were t they're tight with their money, okay? Uh, they didn't buy, Bunker Hunt didn't live extravagant life, even though he, he was more or less born a billionaire from his daddy, who founded the West Texas field, uh, oil field. Um, and, the, um, and they don't really give a shit what other people think. Now, my kids... Uh, my current wife, my first wife, would have gotten that fucking window fixed if they had paid for it themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they'd be embarrassed <laughs> yeah. to, you know, to take the kids anyplace. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, although my, 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 my uh, wife of, of decades now, uh, Sally, was born poor, uh, raised poor, um, 
uh, she, she knows, uh, it's like this, the saying is, um, copper wire was invented by a Yorkshireman, where she's from Yorkshire, and a Scotsman fighting over a penny. That's how copper wire was invented. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, the, I'm not type, I'm, I'm close with my money, but I'm not uh, extravagant because I've spent money in a lot of crazy shit over my lifetime. But um, the, uh, I work hard so I can buy crazy shit. But Sally and I are, are big into charities and uh, mostly the Catholic Church. Catholic Church has me, uh, has their foot so far up my ass. It's uh, the Pope's f uh, uh, red shoes coming out my lips. <laughs> I believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I saw all the, th all the volunteering you do and, uh, uh, you know, charity work that you do, you and your wife, congratulations on such a great marriage. Shit, I want to ask you about that too, but you do a lot, a yep. lot, and we don't have a thing in order to pull it up, but, I mean, I read about 13 or 14 different, um, you know, charity volunteers Correct. that you do. Yeah, you know? at least that. <clears throat> we built and people a, don't know about uh, it. Uh, two years ago, we built a, uh, a Catholic convent and a mission in Sri Lanka, which is 70% Hindu and 20% Muslim, uh, through uh, one of my mentees, Sister Luce, uh, who I, I just posted on um, the uh, YouTube. Uh, she just met with the Pope as the, you know, hot shit. But then 25 years ago, when she was a young hot shit, she, she met with the other pope, the previous pope. She got both. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So, uh, so when she tells me, she says, you know, I, I mentioned you to the pope. Thank you, sister. And so I said, I am, you are on a rocket ship to heaven. Mm -hmm. And St. Teresa, I put my money on, as I say, uh, irreverently, on the bitch. Before she was a saint, <laughs> she was a ruthless girl. Ruthless. Yeah. I mean, no fear. No, no, a ball busting, ruthless gal. And she got canonized the quickest of anybody in the Catholic Church. Yeah. Ruthless. Tough love, tough decisions. So uh, I plan on riding her coattail. I'm going to pass uh, <laughs> Musk and uh, Jeff on the way to Mars as I zip by them. The, uh, but the guys that have done a lot, a lot of good have done, and they're crazy. No sane regular, if that's even a word, human being does this shit. No. They don't. And, and going back to what we said earlier, had my grandfather not been like he was, there's no way I'd be sitting across from you. Because I wouldn't have to drive, I wouldn't be up till 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, where everybody else is sleeping up at 6, trying to figure out how to code this shit, that shit, beat this person, beat that person, because I know they're sleeping, so how can I get the right. advantage? Just like when I box or whatever I did. When they sleep, I stay awake. You know, so through that tough love and everything else, that's how I got where I'm at. Look where you got and had that not happen. And then you move on to more accomplishments. And we were talking in the car. You're, you're like the money man. $820 to $450 million? Correct. Now that's some shit. Real shit. Pre-internet. Pre-internet. And that's real shit. What are some tips along that way that you did? What are some tips that you could give? Well, well, what I said then, what I say now, those who get focused, laser beam focused first and stay focused longest, win most. Period. And I've seen it no matter from A to Z, no matter what industry, no matter what ethnicity, uh, no matter uh, what religion, uh, the guys and gals that do it first uh, and stay longest win most. I tell the kids, don't mind eating last as long as you eat most. And our model is set up that the uh, mentee, or I refer to affectionately as the meatheads, uh, um, mm -hmm. and uh, we've, we've got uh, millions of them now, uh, they get focused first. I just got an email I read before I came down that uh, kid, uh, 23 from Nigeria, uh, bought his first business, because uh, all my material is free on the website. 99.9% .9 of the people that utilize the model, I've never met. And uh, so I get emails all the time. I want to uh, throw them all. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the kid uh, uh, in the African continent, although I have a very, very wealthy mentee uh, named Anelli, who wants to be his goal when he started about six years ago, he wanted to be the richest person on the African continent. Now, that includes King Saud of Saudi Arabia, because that's on the African continent, uh, and some very, very wealthy people. Uh, and, uh, and now he's in the, worth in the high hundreds of millions, okay? Uh, no education, uh, although he did have a, a little uh, successful real estate business when he started. 
Um, but I mean, you will never uh, exceed your wildest and craziest goal for yourself, okay? If you don't see yourself out there competing and winning with the uh, financial guys, whoever uh, that you want to compare yourself to, it will never come to fruition. It just never. And, uh, and you know, like when you worked on on Wall Street, correct? Was it anything like the Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, movie. Was yeah. it? Was not I so wasn't bad. at that end. And and, and uh, Belfort, who uh, I've been on the show, and he <laughs> he and his wife and his uh, son, who uh, idolizes me, we went to dinner. Uh, but that was at the low end of Wall Street. Those are the penny stock guys. I wasn't a penny stock guy, but those guys would you know are ruthless. They would eat your mother's liver if she only had an hour to live. I mean, it's just unbelievable, some of the guys. And uh, there's a scene in the movie where they're throwing midgets. Remember at the time? Yeah. Okay. I've seen that with my own eyes. <laughs> and, 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 and people say, no, they wouldn't do that. Are you crazy? I mean, uh, and um, the Coke era of Wall Street was just beginning when I left uh, 40 years ago. Uh, now, I'm told, I don't know if this is true or not, uh, but the last time I was in a big Wall Street office, you go into the bathroom to, go, to take a pee, and the sink, it looked like it had talcum powder on it. Mm. And I, I, a big building like this, they ought to clean better than that. I go, well, that ain't talcum powder. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they went from Coke to the uh, Modafinil, you know, the Provigil, and now the uh, microdosing, yeah. you know, the mushrooms. Yeah. I don't know about that microdosing shit. I, I don't know. Well, no, I, well, no, I, 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 I skipped drugs or missed drugs, yeah. but uh, towards the end of my career, uh, the um, coke became the prevalent. And it was easy. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you can get it anywhere, but on Wall Street, fuck, you can get it almost anywhere. And then, and I brought that up because you went from Wall Street to uh, the oil company. I forget the exact name. Well, I found a, uh, JPK is the company I went to. It was a corporate client. It was a middle one, yeah. Okay, and then I uh, founded Great Western Energy, and then, which turned into Great Western Resources. Um, and the, uh, um, but I was exposed uh, to the Hunts Hunt Oil. I was exposed to the Onassis Group, which I had the privilege of uh, uh, being with Costa Grazos, the CEO, who became my mentor. Uh, and the, uh, and they don't, if you rub elbows with poor people, you're gonna be poor, okay? If you rub elbows with uh, super wealthy people, and these were billionaires pre-net internet money, um, and uh, they, you know, the best phone call you're gonna get on a New Year's Eve at nine o'clock is somebody to bail them out of jail for being drunk. I, 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 twice I got phone calls from billionaires that said, Dan, I, I need to do this. Uh, uh, the lawyers say I can do it on a fax machine. That's what we did in those days. Uh, but I, I, I want you to buy these assets from me. Uh, and uh, for what a dollar? I didn't even ask what the assets were. I, I, I figured my downside was zero. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, zero. You know, a guy worth seven billion dollars said. That, so I used to fly around in a G two at on his nickel. I said, yeah. And so I said, sure, John, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Um, and but now today, you know, the the, the kids, um, uh, our kids grew up. They they wanted to have friends. And I said, well, there's good friends and bad friends, but friends are normally problems. Uh, and when the kids talk today, I got your six, I got your back. They don't know what that means. No. 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 They have no idea. I mean, they have they, no they, idea what a friend means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as the shit hits the fan, they're no running to the parking lot, out, jumping out windows. No or, or how about times when you, both of us, at times, I read all it, you went broke. Yeah. How about then? Everybody's around, they're Tommy. Gone. Dan, blah blah blah. You have no money. Where, where's everybody? Oh, I, I lost your number. Yeah, and then, you, and then because we don't ever give up, you start from zero. You get back on the huffy and ride the bike and do whatever you got to do to make it. Oh shit, there you are again. And, and then the and, new fucking check up. We always knew you'd bounce back. Yeah, we always, oh, we always do. That's hey, a great now, can I borrow some money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and then the best one of it all, especially now. Say Rob can't. You know, we have a big board at the studio and everything. Say Rob can't make it. I'll call one of one one of the few tech guys I have, uh, and not Scott the engineer, a couple other guys, and I'll say, hey, can you do the board for such and such? Now these are people that are constantly asking me to borrow a hundred here, hundred there. I'm cooking a crock pot. Is that what it's called, a, a crock, crock pot? pot? I don't even know what a fucking crock pot is. Yeah, you know why? Because I work. I, I said, you're cooking a fucking crock pot, but you're asking me for $200 every other week? You're gonna go hit buttons and meet somebody you'll never have a chance in your life, but you're cooking a crock pot. Or I'm busy, a guy 
Like I'm busy doing whatever, you know, babysitting, this, that. Well, where's your, where's the mother at? Oh, she's sitting right here. Mm-hmm. What do you, whoa, whoa. You can't come over to the studio to make money that you're constantly needing because you're babysitting when the mother is at the house. They want it for free. They don't want to do it. Like that's how this shit is, Mr. Pennant. Oh, I know. I know. Now, 15, 20 years ago, I knew more about that because I was, uh, I had less of an organization. Uh, I'm building up. I'm uh, building uh, up. And I got a contract uh, yeah, with yeah, Spotify. Yeah, but, 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 <laughs> but now I, I don't hear so much of that because yeah. the, the guys that report directly to me know that I'd go nuclear. I'm not interested. I, I couldn't give a shit less. Uh, we've had guys, uh, their wife's in labor, and it's an important meeting. A uh, doctor, it happened to be a doctor, and he. Push, honey, push, honey. Excuse me, Mr. Pena. Uh, what was the second point that uh, the lawyer just read? On the push, honey, push, honey. And uh, while they're giving uh, the uh, wives are, uh, in labor, <clears throat> the um, because uh, you know when I tell you I'm going to do it. Uh, one of my uh, favorite stories. 1999. I was in Cabo San Lucas with my kids, uh, and we were down there uh, boys' night out over Easter, and um, uh, I uh, misinformed. Uh, and we're going to uh, do, do a dune buggy race. Okay. And I thought it was just a bunch of half ass. Half, half, it wasn't. It was a serious <laughs> deal. We didn't have helmets. We were <laughs> strapped in. And my boys and I uh, are there. That's and we're, going, I uh, we're, we're going hell bent for leather. And uh, in the final lap, I'm in second, trying to over, in the third, trying to overtake the second guy. And my two boys are right behind me. I hit a boulder that was under the sand. And we flip up 15, 18 feet in the air. And it, uh, we're going down, and the uh, dune buggy is going to land on me. So I kicked it away, and I land, and uh, I uh, dislocate my shoulder, puncture my lung, my liver, uh, broke uh, nine ribs, uh, and all kind of shit. And I almost died. Anyway, so but three days. Then you keep going for a little bit after you started. He, he kept yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on his YouTube channel. While we're all in the description, it's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. You got the extra rib. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 that rib's up there. If I broke that rib, I, I, I would have been fucked. So, so I've got a meeting in Frankfurt, Germany, with Klaus Kleinfeld, who oh. was uh, not the CEO of Siemens yet, but uh, the same Klaus Kleinfeld that did the five hundred billion dollar deal in Neom, and so. Um, I said I was going to be there. I was going to introduce him to three important people. And so we, we, we show up. I show up in a wheelchair with a drip and one of those, you know, uh, space blankets, you know, it looks like silver paper. And I'm being pushed by my then assistant and still one of my close uh, associates, uh, a woman, a uh, Dutch woman named Vinica. And Klaus runs over and says, what, what happened to you? Why are you here? I said, I was going to fucking be here. I'm here. Okay. I'm like this. Like this. Uh, but you showed up. Yeah, I showed up. Same th- token, uh, when I say I'm going to fuck you up, I mean it. I don't mean I'm going to write you a nasty letter. You know, I'm, yeah. I mean, it's likely your fucking DNA is going to disappear from the fucking earth. You're going to eat somebody. Yeah, uh, that's it. And so most people leave me alone. Yeah. Of uh, course, the Grazzo is the CEO of Anas Shipping Lines. Uh, my former mentor said, smart, this, he said this fucking in the uh, early 80s. Smart people are afraid of Mr. Pena. Dumb people get fucked by Mr. Pena. Yeah. Makes and sense. And I, 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 well, I wasn't a gangster in the barrio, but I had that mentality, you know? And the smarts, too. Yeah, and the wits. Yeah. That's why I'm going to ask you this, because this is a very important question for me. What the hell did you eat for all your life? You were so sharp. You were sharp as a guy who's 35. There's no hesitation, no nothing. I mean, you're quick. Yeah, tough. I am. I'm quicker now than I was when I was 50. It's, I, 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 whenever you first got on YouTube, a year later, I was watching. Yeah, we talked about this on the car ride. Yeah, the whole car ride. We talked. What, Cause, what, yeah, because it, you had just started QLA, or at least just started putting it on, correct. Uh, online. What is your diet like? I eat meat twice a week. Um, I eat... Red uh, meat? What? Red, Red meat? Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Rare. Uh, I eat... Um, Fish uh, twice a week. I eat uh, chicken twice a week, uh, but I eat it not the way you're supposed to. Fried and all that shit, you know. Uh, one of my favorites is KFC uh, with extra spices. Uh, hmm. The um, I eat butter. Uh, I like uh, butter and toast. Uh, the um, um, not one thing do I deviate from. Uh, that uh, has been uh, uh, you've been told or we've been led to believe is bad for your health. 
uh, but I exercise at least five days a week, and I have that's down from seven days a week. Uh, not because I've got less energy, but I have more. I'm more busy now than I was 15, 20 years ago. And uh, I, my life is split up into thirds: a third pro bono charity, uh, a, a third uh, QLA, and a third managing my assets. Uh, and I'm still actively uh, chairman of my holding company that's got a little less than 20 companies around the world. Uh, when I leave here, I, uh, I, I go up uh, and I check my emails and then I uh, have a board meeting, uh, at, I don't know, five minutes from here or 10 minutes from here. Uh, then I have a board dinner and then tomorrow I have a similar interview uh, with a local TV station. Um, and then I have a board meeting uh, and uh, then the next day the same, and then I, I, I'm not taking two three days off, but over Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas, and the day after Christmas, my kids and grandkids will be with me down in the Keys, nice. and I'll try, uh, and I try, I'll make sure that my grandchildren, which are little, don't fucking drown or whatever. <laughs> uh, the um, congratulations but, yeah. on such a yeah, but, but uh, my kids have a propensity you know? to do stupid things. Well. We all do stupid. Yeah, shit. yeah. Well, you sometimes I think my, <laughs> I think mine do a little more stupid, uh, because they've seen the difference. I remember seeing my first dead body when I was six and a half. Mm. We were in uh, Europe uh, during the Korean War, and my dad was uh, what do you call it? head of the uh, CIA Criminal Investigation Division, and he was going to spend an afternoon when we were going to go to the sh picture show on base there in France. And he says, stay, he gets a call, um, and he says, stay in the car. So well, you never stay in the car, right? So he goes off into the woods, and I'm crawling around the woods, and I see a dead guy frozen to a log like this with uh, like a knife or a stick. I didn't get close enough in the guy's neck, frozen dead. And so then the, the uh, MPs, uh, military police, and the, Manny, Manny, is that, your, is that Danny? Manny! <laughs> I run back to the car. <laughs> uh, but I, I can close my eyes, and I still see that stiff, pun intended. Um, and the uh, uh, and I got whacked for that. I mean, well, you know, he, he came back in the car. car huh? Boom, boom. When I tell you to stay in the fucking car, I mean the fucking. After that, yeah. if a, if I'm standing here and he says stand here, a tsunami comes, a thousand foot wave, I wouldn't fucking move. <laughs> I, I love yeah. it. Yeah, because I got a better chance surviving the thousand foot wave than, him. <laughs> than my dad gets me. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. So you eat, you just eat whatever you want, basically. Yeah, yeah. And have you been like that all your life? Just uh, no, uh, no. In 1977, I went away to the Scripps Clinic in San Diego, which is uh, you call it wellness now. Yeah. Aside from when you were, you know, weightlifting and bodybuilding, because well, no, you well, were, I, the, the, take uh, those days uh, out. I was on I was on uh, steroids for yeah. seven and a half months, and I got up to 287 pounds. I know. Uh, I mean, and. I couldn't get to 300 no matter what I ate. I remember you saying uh, that. And uh, I'm 230 now, so that's 50, uh, 40, 50 pounds heavier than I was. And I was pretty big and pretty strong. Um, but um, I didn't like to, I had to eat six times a day. And shit. I don't like that. I don't that's like a that. Lot, man. I, don't like, I didn't like going to the bathroom eight times a day, worse than I liked eating, because that shit's got to come out, pun intended. So um, it took me. Nine months to gain 70 pounds. It took me four years to lose it. Yep. Uh, Easy to gain, uh, hard to well, lose. You know, what was your max on the uh, on bench press and all that type uh, of stuff? Four, uh, 395 bench. Wow. And I, uh, they forgot to put the collars on, otherwise it would have been 400. But a 395, uh, I could press uh, 205 sitting down, uh, wow. sitting down press. Uh, I squatted, I, I wasn't too strong in squat. I squatted, I think, uh, 675. Uh, but little guys were squatting like fucking 800. Um, but I don't have the bones like um, um, I remember Schwarzenegger said one time. He says, now he got pretty big, not as big as he tells everybody, but he says, I, I didn't have the bones to really be big, okay? Because a lot of the guys now, if he weighed 260 or 270 at his peak, the guys are now weighing three and a quarter. Yeah. Three, four, I mean, and they got 3% body fat. Guys are but I always had about 10% body fat, even when I, uh, maybe 15 even. Because I always drank. Now, now, uh, you'd consider me uh, a medium drinker. When I was your age and your age, <laughs> I mean, I could have. What's the drink of choice? Uh, 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 well, I've gone from Jack Daniels mm -hmm. to uh, now I've been on Vesper Martinis, the James Bond drink, <laughs> for about the last 10 years, um, with big cheese olives, about 100 calories on olive with cheese stuffed in them. 
and you can't even see the, the, the bottom of the glass. There's no, so many fucking olives in it, <laughs> you know. So that's, uh, Sally said, we don't have to have lunch. The reason <laughs> yeah. why you're never hungry, Dan, is because you eat those goddamn olives. All day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, and of course, I have two gyms in my house, too. One's about from that end of the room to that end of the room from my office. The other gym is outside where I do, uh, it's got the leg stuff, uh, uh, leg exercise. Because now I have, again, a uh, boxing thing in my uh, pavilion where they're going to start That's boxing. So I cool. mean, the, the guys are crazy. Uh, we've got guys coming in. We want to uh, have uh, three five-minute rounds. These kids never don't know what that means. Or uh, some smart ass fight to the death. They, they, they're just flapping their lips, you know? Yeah. Uh, one and a half minutes in there, you know, it's like their lungs are coming out there. Yeah, you're dying. I mean, I, <clears throat> I boxed, you know, when I was 19, 20, 21, golden gloves. Now, when I go to spar once in a while, a round and a half, and I'm dumb. Oh, yeah? And I run on the treadmill every day and everything, sauna, you name it. And now, phew. But that's yeah. great that you put that in there. Yeah, yeah. And the um, With that castle, um, Mr. Penny, I know there's a reason why that particular castle I've watched you too much. There has to be something more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we looked at 19 estates. Down? 19 estates. We started in Belfast. Then we went to uh, Ireland, Republic of Ireland. Then we went to England. And then we went to Scotland. And it was the 19th estate we looked at. Okay? And as we drove across the bridge, Dan Jr. went like this. Daddy, we're home. That was uh, it. Uh, that was a wrap. Yeah. That's what it was. Wow. Well, you could not, that couldn't have a better answer than that to yeah, that question, yeah, huh? Yeah. And, but my goal had been from March of 83 till we moved in, uh, or I moved in September 1 of 84, I wanted to be on an island like a James Bond movie. Well, arguably we're on an island, but, and I wanted to have a moat, no moat, uh, just a, a big lock and a river. But I wanted it easily defendable. So we have a lot of, from the castle to the first tree line, uh, to the castle, to the wall garden, to the castle, to uh, uh, the river, is a lot of open area. Because I firmly believe uh, that it's going to be the haves against the have-nots someday. Yeah. And uh, we're going to mow them down um, like, um, like you, you cut wheat. We're going to stack them up as they try to get up the 70-foot walls. It's going to be the haves against the have-nots. I totally agree with you. I, I tell everybody, they think I'm nuts, but listen... I'm talking to you now. I've talked to Robert Epstein, Dr. Robert Epstein, you know who that is. I mean, he's got more years of yeah. research psychology than anybody in the world. Uh, uh, Dr. Malone, who invented the vaccine, Peter McCullough, all those guys. And my assumption, and a bunch of CIA guys, all of that, my assumption is store canned food now, get water and start storing shit. I really think it's gonna get bad, bad, bad. Oh, I, I agree. Um, How quick do you think it goes downhill? Well, the, the um, when it happens, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be uh, like the first, second, third, fourth wave of uh, Corona, except it's gonna all be in one wave. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be all in one wave. Um, the, do you take uh, the bite that they use the G five towers to shoot the Corona as radiation? No, I, 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 I'm I'm not up to date on that. I don't I don't know, but I do know. Uh, that uh, I said that there was going to be three or four waves. I said that we were going to underestimate it. I said, uh, uh, not uh, unlike what I talked about crypto and other things, that we don't have a fucking clue what we're doing, uh, whether Fauci was right or wrong. I mean, it's uh, uh, the world, depending on how they manage the uh, epi uh, pandemic, uh, whether they came back fast. Uh, China right now is in a second or third wave again. And, and what we, are they up to? Well, I, we don't know. I mean, you know, you like, never is know. that a game? Is that a game so that they can screw us with the chips and everything else? Or is there really an issue there? Well, I mean, you never know. And mm -hmm. we never get, we get maybe a third of the real information or maybe not even that much. But I do know that they could, uh, uh, you know, Musk said this and he took a lot of uh, flack for it. We've got 8 billion people. This planet really needs 2 to 3 billion. Mm -hmm. We would have to be worried about all this shit. We need less people. Musk said recently in the last few weeks, uh, uh, we need oil and gas. Uh, I say that for a different reason. If the planet knew what the real oil reserves of the Middle East and South America were, or are now, oil would go to $5 a barrel. Mm -hmm. 
what's the biggest reason why we're not drilling here? I know that I know the I know he made deals, the fucking deals, but, 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 but deals, but, but, right? But even when Biden said uh, what three months ago, drill more. Well, he doesn't have a fucking clue what he's talking about. He hasn't. Well, uh, yeah. uh, he stopped all the permitting. He he stopped the pipelines from Canada. Pipeline, yeah. I mean, he stopped. Um, where we could increase, we went from uh, producing 11 or 12 million barrels a day, which was a surplus. It took us 25 years to get there. I don't know what we produce now, but we, we exported oil. I mean, uh, six, 18 months ago. Now we're worried about, he has to go over and kiss the ass of Saudi Arabia to, to cut back production. What do they do? They increase production 2 million barrels. And Venezuela. Too. Yes, absolutely, in Venezuela. Yeah, uh, dangerous countries to yeah, be correct, feeding money correct. to now suck up suck up to when we have it here in this country correct so well, who the fuck did he make a deal yeah, with? Uh, well if uh, let's just say florida was an oil producing uh, state uh, like texas it would take the governor if the uh, federal government allowed it it would take us between nine and 36 months to bring on oil depending if it was shallow or deep whether it was onshore or offshore so we're let's just call it two years we have a two-year lag time. Um, so whatever we do now, apparently he's letting some, uh, some of the leases uh, uh, drill, uh, but we've got very wealthy people around the country that have, are doing land banking. In other words, they're buying land or they're buying the mineral rights for land uh, that they plan on drilling between now and the next three to 10 years. Smart. Yeah, but they're not being able to drill. They're not being on drill because they got to go through all the permits and all right, the other right, bullshit right. that they're going to block. And everything we're going to drill isn't going to be a, a it's successful. It's not going to be a success. When, when I got into the oil business in 80, uh, 79, 80, uh, I drilled 22 dry holes in a row. You own that. You own that. Yeah. 22 dry holes in a while. And I said, well, fuck, exploration's harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and so and then we started buying. And it was the beginning of my acquisition period where we bought reserves. It's a lot easier to buy reserves than it is to produce them. Um, and uh, I mean, it's interesting. Berkshire Hathaway at the meeting uh, when we were there in April, May in Omaha. By the way, Omaha or Nebraska has five cows for every human being in the state. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Okay. But um, Warren announced the new CEO is going to take over, who's a Canadian explorationist. Exploration is the last bastion of gunslingers in business in, on the planet today. The last. Really? It's the last. It's, it's the high, highest risk uh, with uh, the, uh, the least reward if you take all the wells that are drilled. Because on average, you, you make a well 1.3 times out of 20 on average. That's everybody included. And so for him to say his successor, uh, I don't know the Canadian guy, uh, a former, ex uh, no, not a former, a current explorationist who ran his energy portfolio the last 10, 12 years, uh, Warren's saying a lot. When they asked him, uh, Mr. Buffett, and they also asked Munger, uh, do you think the board's going to give this new guy, who was sitting right at the table, like here, the same uh, blanket authority as they do you? And Warren kind of smiles, and he turns to Charlie, and Charlie kind of laughs, and he says, no. Okay? It's going to be a slower process, um, but um, it's interesting. He runs his worldwide organization from 3,000 square foot rented office in Omaha, rented office. He's got 22 employees, 23 employees, uh, 17 of which have been there almost 20 years. I like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, the, um, and, you know, he lives in the same house, little house that he's lived in for eons. Uh, and, the, uh, and he's not getting any younger. Uh, but, and, you know, I, I, I wish them both 20 more years. That's probably not likely. But uh, he, he's old as Methuselah. I mean, fuck. Hmm. He's smart as shit, but he's old as Methuselah. That's and why I, I always ask, especially I couldn't wait to ask you what you eat. And yeah. You and you know, and like uh, Rob's father, he's eighty-eight. He has his six-pack every night, no matter what. He well, eats what the fuck he wants to, right? Bacon, yeah. fat, salt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My dad smoked from the time he Did was he? eighteen <laughs> to the time he was eighty-eight, between four and five packs a day. Eighteen every. to eighty-eight, four to five packs okay. a day. Better yet, he drank at least a fifth of whiskey, hard alcohol, uh -huh. from eighteen to eighty-eight. God. And uh, uh, in that middle period, when he thought he was retiring in his late 60s, early 70s, he drank even more. And this is my opinion, not my dad never told me that. I, I think he only cut back on the alcohol when he had more time to play golf and he wasn't as coordinated when he was half a <laughs> <laughs> He didn't want to fucking lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason, because he probably uh, yeah, lost a couple. Yeah, yeah. 
And um, so, what does that tell he, you he, about? He lived in '91. God, his brother, so you his, him and yeah, his family. brother, who was uh, uh, twenty some months older, never had a drink, never had a cigarette, lived uh, two and a half years longer. Never had a drink. Never. But we have good genes. Uh, mm -hmm. My aunt uh, just uh, passed away at 102. Wow. Uh, wow. Other aunts are 98, 99, Damn. 100, 101. So we got good genes uh, on our side. And all the doctors uh, just uh, finished my biannual full um, spectrum physical from top to bottom. They said, you can't beat your good genes. I mean, you got great genes. Do you think that's... Now I'm producing... Um, I don't know, the, I forget the name. Too much red blood cells. So now they want me to drain 500 c centimeters, half a, a liter, no, liter. no, half a, a liter. Or a, a milliliter, yeah, either yeah, ML or yeah, a liter. Five, yeah. Yeah, 500, uh, two or three times a year, because my body's producing too many wow. red blood cells at 77. My testosterone count, your testosterone count, if you were just a regular guy, I yeah. believe you are, just some dipshit who's uh, serving tables here, yeah, yeah. is between three and 450. That's your testosterone level, okay? Um, uh, if you're, you know, if you uh, get up uh, and you pull vault to the bathroom in the morning at your age, you should still pull vault to the bathroom. It's maybe six or 700. I'm 1,200. Okay, but well. I, but I don't, and I never take any, okay. but, but uh, to make, to follow with your point, my father's, it, my father is, 70 76 he's he's 76 he's 1100 to stop okay my last was 1800 yeah it's just okay. genetic I, okay but i don't feel a, like a, i a, want to fuck the wall every time i look okay, around but i've been as high as 2800 whoa uh, buddy yeah, yeah 2800 wow. that's the guinness world yeah, record yeah, yeah, my, my, wow. my wife is happy that it's now <laughs> yeah that, that. yeah yeah my my wife is happy <laughs> oh winfrey had a show about 15 years ago with some very successful women about uh, their husbands want to have sex too much. <laughs> and Oprah was about... Uh, 2,800 wrong with that. Nothing huh? wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, and so Oprah's there, and, uh, and they're all saying, and they all agree, well, this isn't a question normally asked, but to answer your question, Oprah, they all said at the same time, there is a point, and these women are in their early 50s to late 50s, <laughs> that you can, sex isn't the only thing we think about. And Oprah starts laughing, laughing, laughing. And the guy she's been with forever, I forget the guy's name, uh, she says, uh, that's what I say. You know, when I go to bed, the first thing I think about isn't having sex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, so my testosterone level has been high all my life. Uh, and then yeah. go, going back to the eating and the diet and how sharp you are and how smart you are, you think it's just straight genetics. It, you yeah. Because person A could eat the healthiest life, never smoke, eat everything from the ground, from the earth. Then person B can smoke five packs of cigarettes a day, a, a fifth of whiskey, make it all the way through, you know, 88, 89 years, be successful, 91, nine, uh, be successful and no issues. Correct. So then the only conclusion to that would have to be, it's just genetics. extreme genetics, yeah, yeah. A or B, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, genetics, uh, uh, and my dad never did a push-up. My dad uh, was an alternate at the 1936 Olympics for gymnastics. And when uh, uh, a Japanese kid from USC uh, got the slot and my dad didn't and uh, he never did an exercise again okay so do you think when, when you're born do you think there's something in there something somewhere where your date is your date and there's nothing that's yeah. changed unless you know something crazy well, I, I should have been dead at least 20 times by now that's and, why i asked you because i mean and, fuck and, it well i bet the bear fight all the oh, shit yeah, they yeah, did yeah, run over i don't want to ask you the run same shit over over. yeah run over by a buffalo i forgot yeah, to tell yeah, you about yeah. that people ask me well, what it feel like like i'm hit by a bus <laughs> it's like a fucking bus or <laughs> to a tell bus. us that story uh, yeah, uh, uh, I got, uh, there, so great. Uh, crocodile dundee the movie most people have seen there was a real guy crocodile dundee his name was barry lees uh, and uh, he had a, a club foot. One foot was about this shorter, and he walked kind of like a little gorilla. Uh, and so uh, you used to be able to hire him um, after the first Crocodile Dundee movie, movie was published or released, and so I wanted uh, to go with him, and so I said, I want a big, uh, uh, both in Africa and in Australia, I wanted the biggest buffalo I could get. And so he said, well, we, we go out, uh, we're gonna fly to Durban, uh, spend a couple nights in Durban and then go out in the bush. So we're out about two and a half days in uh, outside Durban and he's whispering. I go, why are we whispering? He says, we're in Abo land. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> we're in Aboriginal land. Well, this is all Aboriginal. No, no. We're not supposed to be here. 
I pay you all this fucking money, <laughs> and you take me to a restricted oh hunting area. Yeah, well, you, th those kind of big buffaloes don't exist. They all run here because they don't get hunted. Mm -hmm. Anyway, to make a long story short, on the way back, we're, we're getting out of fucking Ambulance. On the way back, he says, he may be gone now, but there's, a, there's an old uh, buffalo, uh, a big buffalo, um, and it's, uh, he used to be under the tree in a pond, scratching his back on the roots that hang, hung over the thing. Anyway, we go there, we sneak up, and we get upwind from him, and sure as hell, he's there. And he said, well, well what we're going to do is I'm going to stand over there, and I'm going to throw rocks at him. He'll spin around. He can't get over this big log, so he won't go that way. He'll come right at you. And at that time, I was hunting with pistols because the rifles were too easy. So I had a 454 console, which was the largest handgun known to man at the time. So he throws the rocks, and man plans God laughs. He jumps over the fucking log, just like the asshole told me he couldn't. And he's, he, <laughs> and he's on me. He's like the camera, like this. So I go to squeeze, and as he runs over me, I hit him in the chin and comes out his nose, but it misses his brain. And he runs over me, I'm flat on my fucking oh. back like this. And so oh. I try to shake it off the best I can. So I jump up and I see his ass in going that way. So I'm, and one of the reasons I have an artificial hip is because he fucked my hip up anyway. So I'm limping after him, so I'm firing boom, two. Boom, oh. three, four, five. And I can't tell if I'm hitting him because he's not slowing down. You but eventually me. he spins around just like in the movies claws and charges me okay so i said oh i'm gonna hit this fucker right in the head click the 454 is console only has five bullets oh no blank and he drops dead right at my feet oh, oh it's your last one yeah. one more oh one. okay shit. i hit him with my last one from before and so all the i hit him all five times i didn't know i hit him oh you didn't know that you had him and holy shit he spins around and drops and so and then barry because he's got a, a fucked up gimp leg he finally catches up to me and um the he says i'm yelling at you you're out of ammo. That's what, but my adrenaline's pumping. Mm. Boom. I drop him right there. But then adrenaline went down. I collapse. Hurt. I'm fucked up. Worse than the worst beating I ever got by a human Billy. <laughs> uh, and so, um, but he should have killed me, but he didn't. I sure as hell don't want to be the one to make you late for your movie. I know we got six minutes left. Uh, okay. So I get to it. And I really appreciate your time. Uh, Thank you. I, I've enjoyed it. Thank so you. great, great, great. Uh, so if, if Trump does run like he says he is, who runs against him? And do you think he can win? Even if even if everybody goes for whatever it is, the way that they have the fraud, like they have the box three, everybody go look at box three. OK, you and I both know that the reason why that lady went in front of the Senate on YouTube was because they wanted you and me and everyone else to see that lady say there was a box three in Arizona. It was there. We couldn't get into it. We couldn't count them, blah, 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 blah. The mail-in votes. They, they let the movie go for a little while, 2,000 mules, and they took it off. Then they let it go. So whatever you see on YouTube, owned by Google, and so on and so forth, is what they want you to see. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to look at the mail-in votes, the bullshit box three. Even if, whether Trump, whoever, can anybody actually win? Uh, I believe the second time around because of uh, a combination of uh, Biden's incompetence, him shaking hands with nobody that exists, him, uh, you know, falling down, uh, et cetera, and uh, from a health perspective, and Trump looks as healthy as a horse. Uh, the, uh, you may not like what he says, but he, he can say it. Uh, uh, Biden, they kept him, part of the reason he got elected, in my opinion, is they kept him away from the people. He was able to use Corona as an excuse why he wasn't out there. But I mean, he, uh, uh, he, he, he's not, whether he has early onset dementia, we were on a, a cruise uh, about 15 months ago, and one of the guys that went to school with his wife, apparently, uh, said that uh, you know, his two biggest uh, uh, foibles or uh, uh, challenges he has, number one, the plugs that they put in his head are, <laughs> bald, are shitty ones, he didn't get expensive ones, and the second thing is uh, he can't remember anymore. If they, they run a sick Biden, Trump can beat a sick Biden. And on top of that, Biden has done a lot of things to piss off a lot of people. Okay. You know what I thought, Mr. Pena? I thought they might run Michelle Obama. And if she runs, well, who can beat her? Who's well, going to beat well, her? Well, I mean, there's a re uh, not many people know this, but Michelle and Barack's uh, law license have been revoked. Ooh. They can't, they can't uh, uh, practice law anymore. 
Was that, did that have anything to do with the United States Corporation, this corporation? I'm not sure which, but I, it, it's, it's yeah. unusual uh, that uh, nobody made anything about uh, Michelle because now we just had, in the last seminar at the Castle, we just had a classmate of Obama in law school, Harvard Law School, a black gal, a super gal, uh, former ambassador. Uh, and uh, she, she said in a very nice way, she says, Michelle is infinitely sharper than uh, Barack. And um, and they, she but and she went to law school at Harvard for three years with uh, the former president. Um, the um, but Trump's got to get past the governor here first, yeah. and it doesn't sound like he's backing down. I, I hear uh, Trump said, "Why don't you be vice president, and then you can be president eight years after vice president?" If if for some reason he convinces the governor here in Florida to be his vice president, I think Trump's got, got to walk walk through. I mean. Yeah. Because he's got an, enough positive support, he, doesn't, he did enough smart, brave, whatever kind of things uh, you want to call. Um, the uh, plus, uh, uh, the governor here is, is a current uh, naval officer in the reserves. He's, he, he got you know a minority. Blah, 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 blah. If you can call uh, being a, a Cuban uh, a minority here in Florida, I don't. I'm not sure that's uh, exactly accurate. Now remember last time, if he gets in. And there's an open uh, spot. You gonna go? Are you gonna try to get in? No, yes, no, no, no. Come on, I, I, come I, I, on. I, I know you. I know you got the UK thing going yeah, on, yeah. but come on. But I had preliminary discussions uh, during this first run. If he got in the second time, that didn't happen. But I also said I would not be appointed if I had to go through a congressional. All the whole bullshit. I, I would have to be appointed, and then I, and I would be glad to go in. Then, not now. I would be glad to go in as, as hatchet man and uh, clean shit up. Uh, because I, you know, what are they going to do to me? I'm already rich. Uh, nothing they can yeah, do. I'm not, not that I'm not worried. But um, Trump's going to make it interesting. He's going to make it tough for whoever. And he's, uh, you know, I don't know if he's any less vengeful. Uh, he's a couple years younger than I am. But his health will not, will not be an issue, whereas Biden's health will be an issue. Um, uh, I'm told uh, by people that know that President Biden takes a two-hour nap every afternoon. Well, that's not such a great thing. I take naps too, but I'm not President of the United States, okay? Um, wh whether that uh, would vote against him. He has a pair of safe hands. He's never gonna push the nuclear button first. Uh, you know, there's, and there are- Nobody all, fears you know, him. Yeah, but um, you know, in Europe, they, they laugh about the United States. You know, they just do. I'm a dual citizen. Uh, and whether my uh, political aspirations come to fruition or not, this n recent thing where they threw out um, um, Boris, uh, uh, the Indian kid is now prime minister, but now they're talking about postponing the election for two years. I'm not going to be running in my early 80s. So if they keep the election for May of 2024, I'm run running. And right now, my uh, all the input all the publicity, all the feedback, all the YouTube, I've got over 98% approval. That's awesome. You should okay. do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if they postpone it a couple of years, that's not likely I, I do that because I've got other fish to fry and I've got other things I want to do. Um, then uh, running, uh, running for office, running around the UK uh, in my early 80s, uh, you know, um, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I can do that for sure. You know, with, with your YouTube channel, if you can't make it out to the castle and so on and so forth, and what happens at the castle, you know you're helping so many people with mental yeah. health. Yeah. Not Fuck the money. Mental health. Correct. I understand. You're, you're really doing that. That's a special thing. And the more and more people I talk to, that seems to be the root, one of the biggest roots of all these problems. Mental. It's mental health. And no one's taking it seriously, especially our vets. Before you have to go, a guy who worked for me killed himself. That He called me. He worked for me. He was my, he was just like, he was our kind of guy. You know, I couldn't see out the window of my office. I wanted to see the ocean. The next, he dressed up in jogging suit, went, cut down all the bushes, right, Rob? Mm -hmm. Went down, cut all the bushes, put acid on top and planted new grass so nobody would know. He comes into work. He says, look out your window. I say, you motherfucker. He was, a, he was just a man like that. Well, what had happened was COVID hit. And they took away his overtime at the VA. And when he was in the Cold War, he was a Marine. He was the head of his Marine. He was four guys with him. He lost one. And he couldn't bring the one back. And he could never get over it. When he got home, he got no help. So the VA was his home. Mm -hmm. That was his brother's. 
when he lost the overtime at the VA because of COVID, two weeks started just drinking like I've never seen. We had him on. I mean, he was just a mess. Yeah, sad. Tried to help him that night. He called me that night. Yeah. It's too bad. Yeah. Mental health is a... That's too bad. And it, so when you say that, I, and I see what you're doing, you know, it's not just the money. No. But if you could give me one real quick story of a shocker that came to the seminar and just boom, man, it doesn't have to be the guy that made the most, did the most, just something real special. Um, well, there's, there's, there's two. We've had kids with 80 IQ and we've had kids with 180 IQ. 80 IQ? 80. The 180 IQ um, uh, made about 40 million, okay? Wow. The 80 IQ made about 400 million. It's not brains, mm -hmm. it's pulling the trigger. You know, uh, but then, but but yeah, then. yeah, you got to be able to convince yourself uh, that uh, decision making is good. Non decision making or procrastination is bad. Okay, um, but uh, the great stories from Ford, Edison, you name it, uh, have all uh, had the ability to make decisions and uh, not worry about what other people said, not worry about what other people wrote, not worry about all those things. And, uh, and for whatever reason, uh, self-esteem is the bedrock of all high performance. And I've had it, uh, I was uh, raised, I didn't know my dad was a superhero at the time, but all his buddies from the Second World War and the Korean War were all like him. And so I thought everybody was like that. And then I went in the military, or not everybody was a superhero, but at that stage, the military still was disciplinary, uh, um, uh, was the name of the game. Uh, the uh, uh, Making yourself uh, accountable was the name of the game. And now it's just the opposite. And as I said towards the beginning of this uh, interview, uh, those who get laser beam focused first, uh, stay the longest, accomplish the most. And it's just that simple. Uh, but staying focused uh, is not easy. We've got all kinds of diversions, and that's one of the challenges the young kids have. I mean, information is almost instantaneous now. Yeah. Uh, and all the information sh is not fit to be printed. Uh, fake news, it transcends. We've had fake news for 20, 25 years. We didn't call it fake news. We didn't call it fake news. Uh, there's, you can almost put anything up uh, until recently on Twitter and stuff like that. They allow a beheading on Facebook yeah. where, uh, uh, you know, the uh, terrorists behead guys and gals and children. But uh, somebody that's got a different political opinion they don't. It's not unbelievable. Okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, Musk, in closing, this is really a, yeah. a good thing, Musk. Yeah, uh, yeah what's okay. your prediction on okay. Musk, too? Uh, uh, the, uh, Elon said, it's ironic that you can't get a business loan, a, a, a kid 18. Okay, you can go die for your country, blah, 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 um, and drive, and in some states even drink. You, can, you can't get a business loan for 10 grand, but they'll give you 100 grand to go to university to learn nothing. Okay, mm. that, those are his words. Uh, mine aren't any more complimentary. Having uh, you know, uh, taught, coached, and lectured at some of the great universities, uh, Naval Academy, Oxford, Wharton, et cetera. And the kids are there, but they're lacking leadership. Okay, yeah. nobody's taking them serious enough uh, to give them that leadership. Uh, and the uh, nobody's it, taking that step forward, right? Absolutely. Being that one to take that you know, step, and then the, the, the rest. The educational of system is the same is roughly speaking 50 years ago. And the world's moved on. <laughs> the world's moved on, okay? Uh, not just because of the internet, um, not just because uh, we have the rocket power to uh, devastate uh, the planet, uh, you know, in a matter of minutes. Um, not many people understand if a full-blown nuclear war really happens, uh, God forbid, uh, it's, it's not gonna be weeks, months, or years, it's gonna be hours. Within an hour, it's estimated that 500 nuclear bombs can be put in the air. Five, and the nuclear bombs they have now are a thousand times stronger than Nagasaki and Hiroshima. There's not going to be anything left. And they can't detect them, I don't think, quick enough. They're already no, no, in New York no, no, before no, they can yeah, detect them, right? We don't, Am I have, right? we don't have the ability to stop. We have the ability to stop the odd one. Yeah, the oddball. Yeah, but yeah. if it's coming right in New York, by the time yeah, we know yeah, it's there, yeah, it's already yeah. there. Maybe Miami would be safe. <laughs> because, because people down here, the sun's baked their brains too long. Yeah, right? yeah. We're not missing anything. That is if we don't uh, drown from global warming. Oh, yeah. Remember, remember, well, remember I mean, we drown. We're supposed drawn. to drown. Global warming is real. <laughs> yeah. I, I know we have like 15 seconds. Two quick questions and real, okay. real quick. You're, you're Catholic. I'm yeah, Catholic Roman myself. Catholic. I just had a question because we brought it up in my head earlier when you talked about all the donation and money you give. Do you think they should allow priests to marry? 
Do you think that can solve? I know there's a shortage and shortage. The short answer is yes. It's a much longer answer than that. Correct. Because I had a, a schoolboy friend, Father John, Carmelite priest, uh, who uh, was a priest 50 years, never got married. But I know that was one of his regrets, not to be able to get married and have kids. Um, but you know why they made priests back in the 8th or 9th century uh, practice celibacy? Because as they were dying, they were married before that. They, as they were dying, they were leaving their property to their family and not yeah. the church. Yeah, okay, and so a, a good deal of the wealth. What's the second? And then the last question is, uh, a, a man of your legendary status, who you are, Thank you. do you trust people? I always wonder that with someone who... I give people the benefit of the doubt, but my benefit of the doubt isn't like a regular Joe's. Yeah. Okay, um, the, uh, the, um, so I have a, a, a higher standards, okay? I have a thing called a doofus test. Uh, our, the first meeting is on uh, Valentine's Day. Or the first meeting is if I can find out your wife's birthday, or uh, on Christmas, uh, uh, or Hanukkah, whatever is a holy day to you. And if they can't make it, piss on you. Michael Melkin, who's a contemporary of mine, uh, when he met Michael once, the junk bond uh, king, he said his first meetings were at 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. On what day? Like, would he do it like on Christmas? Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, any, Christmas, whatever, 2 to 4. If you're not willing to come at 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock to see me in the morning, your deal is not worth talking to me about anyway. And that eliminated 95% of all his meetings. I bet it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, New Year's Day. Uh, I just always wondered that. It just seems hard to trust people when you're in this position. Yeah, but somebody's uh, always out to uh, get. Many of the decisions are already made before they get to me. Yeah. Okay? It either has to be a world class fucking problem. Yeah. <laughs> and or a world-class opportunity, which I try to make all problems opportunities because I look at things differently. Um, but I'm, at, at my age now, I'm not, I'm not looking for any 10, 20 years, uh, you know, no, no. Uh, ways to save the world. <laughs> you know, three years, 36 months is far out for me now, okay? Um, and anything that we think we can do in 36 months, we can probably do in three to six months. It's all about, uh, uh, you know, setting expectations, reframing the, the, the challenge into an opportunity, and then make it compulsory that some part of the monetary success goes to the individuals that are working on it. Remember, don't, don't uh, worry about getting paid last as long as you get paid most, mm -hmm. okay? And, and that's the situation I'm blessed with. And the, uh, I got guys and gals that work themselves, not to death, but... Uh, Close they work to hard. T today they would say work to death. No, they work hard. Yeah. And they're successful. I still work 50, 60 hours a week, but it's not work for me. Yeah. As down from 100 or 120 when I was a lot younger. But I mean, if you work 100, uh, well, they did a chart on my 70th birthday. Uh, instead of 70, I was really 131 because of all the 100, 120 hour work weeks I had. So at 70, I had worked 61 more years than I got another guy, 70, because of all the 100, 120 hour work weeks. So look at the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. But I've got kids that work 140 hours. They don't need, I, I always needed three or four or five hours sleep. Some guys are blessed, in my opinion, that they don't need but one or two hours sleep. I, I needed, my, probably Sally says, because I drank so much, I needed, my body needed that much more time to recuperate <laughs> and burn the alcohol through my system. But What's the key to keeping that marriage so long? Because the divorce rate's so high, and then that's it. The key it. is uh, most people get married for the wrong reason. Most people have kids for the wrong reason. You have to be on the same boat, rowing the same way. You have to have the same interests. Uh, you have to have the same wants and desires. Um, and the, uh, and your uh, significant other, whether it be a man or a woman, has to uh, be willing to sacrifice at almost the same level you do. And in many respects, the wives sacrifice more because they're doing stuff. Women are much better at multitasking than men. Uh, uh, Sally, uh, who's a trained psychologist, one uh, chartered accountant, wow. that special, specialist, formerly yeah. from a big four, and she sailed um, across the Atlantic. Wow. She's a skipper. So she, she's capable of doing a lot of stuff. Superior, superior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the... Um, Guys, I enjoyed it very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing it on... Uh, uh, it will be on Spotify first and then YouTube. Okay. I still yeah. can put it on YouTube until the end of uh, this year. So we'll okay. get it on YouTube. So, you so if, if you notify uh, Kat, I think you work... Yeah. 
Uh, and so I look forward to it, and we'll have to do it again. I hope yeah, so. Awesome. But you were great. great. Dan. This episode is sponsored by WestonJohnBoucher.com. Even after a decade of exposure to the fashion industry, while fully immersed in the modeling world, model and future designer Weston John Boucher still hadn't found clothing that checked every box when it came to look, feel, quality, durability, and price. His solution was to create a menswear brand that would bridge the gap between designer-level pieces and reasonable price points without sacrificing quality. Weston's aim was to provide men who prioritize their health with effortless sophistication and style through simplicity of flattering fits, handsome designs, and amazingly comfortable materials. It's time to elevate your style. Experience obtainable luxury by Weston John Boucher at WestonJohnBoucher.com. Use the code Tommy to save 25% off your first purchase, their largest discount ever, I'll tell you right now, it would give Imperio Armani, Giorgio Armani, Page a run for its money. So go to Weston, W-E-S-T-O-N-J-O-N-B-O-U-C-H-E-R.com. Use the code Tommy, T-O-M-M-Y, and save 25% off. Link is in the description below.